Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Data here, and welcome back to the Montreal Expos MLB The Show 24 live franchise mode here into the 2025 season, year number two with the Expos, episode number four of our live franchise mode series here on The Show 24. If you're watching after you've already gone live, you can hop ahead to the five minute mark, that's when we get started, and if you're watching as we are live streaming it right here on Tuesday evenings, 7 p.m. Eastern, as always, you can go ahead and just wait and welcome all all of our friends and fellow assistant general managers into the chat. Jack, first in, welcome to the stream, my friend. As we're getting ready for an exciting 2025 season, it will be a defining draft as we have the fifth overall selection in this draft. Last year, we had the 10th overall pick, but this year, number one, we have the fifth overall pick, but number two, we also want to start thinking, what type of season will this be for the franchise? Are we still going to be pushing for, let's try and finish towards the bottom? Or is it time to say, okay, we have already some good pieces. We drafted some more last year. We'll draft some more this year. And from here, let's start thinking about not pushing for a, for a World Series, but let's start thinking about some wild card appearances sooner rather than later, right? Tadoro, welcome to the stream. We're live with MLB The Show 24, Montreal Expos, year number two into episode number four, the 2025 season. Exciting times. Hope you've all had a lovely start to your week. Bonjour, mes amis. Welcome, Joe. Uh, we haven't been live since Thursday night with the Starfleet, so I'm glad to be back all with all of you here once again this evening. Thursday was uh, an incredible night. We set, uh, I think it was a, a stream record for most donations in an evening. Maybe some of those players, some of those donors who, well, what we've been doing is that donors have been put, putting their names into a raffle. And if you donate to the channel, you get your name put in a raffle for a created player. Now that we're having a draft, yeah, I wonder if tonight will be as crazy, says Hobbsy. Tonight as we have a draft, those drafted players could be renamed in honor of those donors. Could be that tonight is where we start doing it. If you prefer to have a created player in NHL, you could wait. But we might start thinking about the players who are the, the donors and the viewers who are already guaranteed players. Maybe we can start thinking about what would we rename those players who we draft, right? Don't want to go too crazy with it, but it would still be fun to start thinking about that tonight. Could be. It could be. No guarantees. But we'll think about it if the right people are in the chat tonight. Welcome to everybody joining us for year number two of our franchise mode here with the Montreal Expos, the re-relocated Expos, the Nationals back to Montreal. Will we have a, will we still have a stream every Tuesday and Thursday during the playoffs? Great question. I think in the past I have, but there might be some changes depending on like if there's a really big game seven coming up or something. They'll st I'll still do my best to have two streams per week, but I might play around with the Mondays and the Wednesdays and the Fridays. So I wouldn't say it's always going to be Tuesday, Thursday. I would say typically it would be. But not always. Um, right, no problem, no problem, Narf. <laughs> All up to you. So I wouldn't guarantee Monday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, but I would say that it's very likely. And if not, then it'll be some other time in the week. I still want to have at least one per week of each series, so two live streams per week. Welcome. Okay. Last couple things got to do here. I'll pull up the uh, depth chart for you where we are as a franchise at this moment. It's definitely a year in which we'll have some younger players, you know, trying to get some some uh, some at-bats. I wouldn't say as much as I, as I want to start think, pushing for that wild card soon. I don't know if this is that year just yet, but I do think we should be better than bottom five. Maybe not, but I do think that we should start getting better than bottom five. We should start moving into that, uh, that echelon. There we go. Uh, let's see, Hobbs, I got called into work today, so I didn't get a chance to release it before the stream, but speaking of playoffs, keep an eye out for the Discord either tonight or tomorrow. Oh, yes! I forget what the results of the bracket challenge were last year. It, the winner of the bracket challenge, I've said created player, but the winner I don't think has ever reached out to me. So, you know, if you enter it and you win it, you gotta make sure that you reach out to claim your prize. There we go. It's going to be a defining draft with the fifth overall selection this year. Last year, we had a good pick at number 10, but this year really means something at number 5. Um, okay, tweet is sent. Good, and we're just about ready. Leave myself a like. Why not? I like what I'm doing. And there we go. And how much time did that leave me with? Uh, about 15 seconds. Lovely. <laughs> just enough time to pull up the comments from the last one. Okay, nothing back to challenge if I can throw in. Oh, yeah, even something different. Okay, Hobbsy. Okay, I see you. 
It's been the channel though. I'm looking forward to having the um, the uh, simulation of the playoffs once we get all of the once we know who's making it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this party started. Year number two here in Montreal. In the off season, we made some good changes. Well, good change. We made, picked up some good players, I should say. Um, have a wild, pick five might be high overall. Will we have a wild card? Well, we have a fifth overall pick in this draft from last year's result, but we'll see what happens with this year's result, which will define next year's draft. So in this past offseason, if you didn't watch last episode, we had a few changes. We picked up Ahmed Rosario from free agency, a tempting guy because he bat 250 last, excuse me, he bat 287 last year, and he has A potential. Even though he's 29, that A potential could get him to grow into the, well into the 80s. You never know if the right uh, things start clicking. Doggy off from the stream. We signed JD Martinez to be our DH. He wasn't getting signed. He was just sitting there in free agency. We said, hey, let's do it. 34 home runs last year. Let's get him in here. Um, yes, Joe, uh, Siri can play any outfield spot. Joey Manessis is back. Lane Thomas is back. Jose Siri, a trade that we made with the Tampa Bay Rays. He's into his first season now with us. In that first game of the season last uh, last episode, he went one for four. He bat 212 last year, so the, um, the I'm sure the Rays, we had spoken about the storyline, how the Rays would be open to doing this, but with B potential, 29, 81 overall, we're going to hope for, for some growth uh, long-term from Siri as well. Cruz, one of our rookies who's playing this year, A potential, 74 overall, Dylan Cruz out in the outfield, Kiba Ruiz as our catcher, Nick Senzel, we picked up Kyle Higashioka as our new backup catcher, uh, Terran Vavra, we got him last episode in a trade, hopefully we can squeeze a little growth from him maybe. Uh, Stone Garrett, of course. He went from A potential to B potential, but he's still an 80 overall. He has great contact. I want to get him to the lineup more. I want him to play more. So I'm going to see where we can fit Stone Garrett. And we also have Emmanuel Rodriguez here. 69 overall, B potential. Will he get sent down? I think we had spoken about that last episode, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. When we look at the pitching rotation, we brought in Walker Bueller. Very crowded in Los Angeles. He was a free agent. We signed him to a five-year deal, paying him $8.5 million per season. Last year, at a 3.8 six ERA. He was pretty solid with 16 wins, 30 starts, and 17 quality starts. So he's going to be our ace for this year. Josiah Grips with 79 backing him up. Well, backing him up. He's the number two in the rotation. Mackenzie Gore is up to a 76 with his A potential. Mike Soroka, we picked him up in free agency. Two years at 6.3 million to bring in a Canadian to play here in Montreal. We like his pitch repertoire. We're excited to see what he can do. Again, B potential. You never know what kind of growth we might get. And same for Cade Cavalli. He had a strong spring training. We're trying to get some growth from him as well. Uh, oh, yeah? No kidding. That's funny, Hobbsy. That Flyers fan was arrested, got arrested again. Um, yeah, you're right. That's true. That's true, Narf. We'll see what more what other trades get uh, done in this episode, if any. Jackson Rutledge here in long relief. Same for Jake Irvin. In mid relief, we picked up Joe Barlow in free agency, correct? Or, no, or was it a trade? I think it was free. No, I think it was a trade. I think it was a trade for Joe Barlow. Yeah. No, no, sorry. What am I saying? It's Rule 5 draft. Rule 5 draft for Joe Barlow. Loi Sigia, if, if I'm, I keep forgetting how it says, um, he was a reliever last year with the Yankees. He had great numbers. We signed him one year, three million. Um, my kid, that's a throwback, Joe. We also picked up Caleb Ferguson. We pretty much revitalized uh, the bullpen here. Ferguson and Loi Sigia, two, um, two of the Yankees relief pitchers there. Uh, Hunter Harvey in, mid, in uh, setup and Matt Barnes as the closer for now, but Hunter Harvey could very well get that spot. In the system, of course, many other great players were continuing to grow. Mick Abel, Rod Hart, James Wood, Elijah Green, Brady House, Chase Petty. Those are the big ones down there in AAA, some of the bigger prospects in the MLB to boot. So we have them down in AAA, a few guys down in AA, uh, not too much in Class A, a few of these guys we drafted recently, I believe. And that's about it. So... Had we said, yeah, I think if, had we said we were sending down Emmanuel Rodriguez, or would it depend on what happens with uh, one of these guys getting called up to AAA? But I suppose he could start the season, Emmanuel Rodriguez could. Chase Petty, Tom Petty's grandson, perhaps, perhaps. So there's the, the uh, lineup to remind you of where we are and where we're headed towards after this pass off season. Looking at the comments from the last one. Uh, oh no, I opened up the uh, wrong episode, excuse me. Comments from last one. I don't think there was much to say after that offseason. Bit of a money ball offseason, trying to not spend cheaply or anything like that, but more just 
in the right spots, not necessarily conservative. Ah, yes, James left a comment. If you want to assemble a Canadian super team, because we went after Mike Soroka, another guy I would love to see get pursued is Cal Quantrill of the Colorado Rockies. Save him from Coors Field. Also in Cleveland, if Cleveland is faltering, around the deadline, go for Josh and Bo Naylor. Both Canadian and Josh plays first base, a position that we need to fill longer term. Unless Stone Garrett were to take that spot, but we'll see. I feel like eventually you got to get Vladdy Jr., but that's probably years away. And I agree. I think Vladdy Jr. is a must sometime in this series, but it might still be a little while until that happens. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to roll into year number two without having to say too much else. We started last episode. The season opener was a 7-6 win in New York against the Mets. Walker Bueller getting the win, I believe, in his debut, right? Yeah, he got the win going five and two-thirds, and now we'll continue into the season. We're trying to be probably more middle of the pack this year. I don't think we're necessarily saying we're trying to the wild card. If any surprise starts to happen, then I'm, I'd be happy to push. Just that I, what I'm trying to say is, I'm not afraid if we are successful. Being successful this year would not mess up our plan. We had the 10th overall pick last year. We had the 5th overall pick this year. It won't be a big deal if for some reason we go, we punch above our weight, we make the wild card, we lose early, then next year we're back to where we were. That wouldn't be a bad thing. It would be okay to give our team experience like that. But again, I'm not counting on that either. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be doing a lot of scouting in the first half of the episode before the draft comes up, but in total, we'll be doing the entirety of the 2025 season here in Montreal. And without further ado, let's get started with the second game of the season. The first game of the episode, we're in New York, David Peterson on the mound against Josiah Gray. Uh, Warmaster, just left a comment on Vancouver, can't wait to see your reaction. All right, Warmaster, I'll get to that tomorrow, great. Uh, and yes, Quantrill will be a good pickup as well in uh, longer... Well, let's look at him quickly. Uh, not necessarily Teodoro. It, you know, it Developing the young guys is definitely a huge aspect of this season with younger guys in our roster, but there's a reason we brought in Rosario and Martinez. We also want to see a little bit of success where possible. And War Master asking me how my day was. Pretty great. Well, pretty great. Pretty good. I, great, I feel like I should reserve if something special happens, but it was a good day. No complaints. Bit congested, but no major complaints. Uh, Joe, hate to sound like slim, but perhaps the next area we bring we begin working on would be defense. It's lowest at yeah, 28th. At 29th, excuse me. That'll come with the development of our outfield. I'm sure that'll come. So if we look at the Rockies. Rockies, Rockies, Rockies went the wrong way. Rockies, Cal Quantrill, 76 overall. Last year signed on at 6.6 .6 million. Uh, yeah, 6.6. .6. So getting him wouldn't be too hard to do. And then over in Cleveland. Uh, <laughs> there's no yelling, so you don't sound like Slim. Uh, I already passed them, right? Psst. Guardians. If you look at first base, we see Josh Naylor, 83 overall. He'd be a bit harder to get. The clutch is really important as well. So he'd be a bit harder to get, Josh Naylor. And then looking in the outfield for, where is he? Bo Naylor, has he been traded? Not sure. But Josh Naylor, yeah, he wouldn't be easy. Ah, yeah, it wouldn't be easy. Okay. So let's get into the first episode, uh, the first game of this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Don't want us to bring it too, too long. I'm really trying to aim for that two-hour range. Oh, yes, yes! Warmaster, don't get to look at San Diego for Matt Waldron. I picked him up a few times. He sims really well. Oh, Naylor's on the Twins. Bo Naylor will be on the Twins here. Oh, okay, sorry. Apologies to, to keep going back. Just want to make sure we get this out of the way. Twins, Twins, Twins. Would Bo Naylor be on the Twins? No, he must have been traded somewhere else. Don't see him. And I forgot about, the, I totally forgot about the comment in the uh, Discord server. Um, yeah, there's a comment. How did I sound? You're doing well. Not a bad impression. Sorry, I totally forgot about the, There's not usually much in Discord server, so I totally forgot. My apologies. Um, no, no problem. No problem. Yeah, we'll do player search in a second. Sorry. Um, yeah, trade for Matt Waldron from San Diego Knuckleballer. Yeah, Hobbsy put that for Warmaster. Perfect. So let's... Go to, where do we say? San Diego, San Diego. Padres, 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 Padres. Where am I going? Starting pitcher. Uh, what's his name? Waldron. Is he a relief pitcher? Or is he a starter? Oh, here he is, Matt Waldron. There we go. So we have the knuckleball, the four seam, the sinker, the slider, the cutter. 71 overall. He would be a good guy and a good option for us in long relief. So let's just think about this. If we were to think about making a change in long relief, if I trade you like Jake Irvin, 
that's not too far off. A six, like they're both 28, they're both C potential, but Irvin is a lower overall. Maybe Thad Ward gets it a bit closer. How about Rutledge? I don't want to move Rutledge though. He, he looked okay last year. He looked okay. I don't want to move Rutledge yet. If I give you, um, even Tim Cates isn't enough, eh? I think they're pretty much the same between Irvin and Kate. I wouldn't mind moving out the 600 to bring in the 760, though. So Jake Irvin moves out. He was okay last year, too, though. Thad Ward was... Ah, oh, man. Somebody's got to move, though. In honor of... Uh, well, in honor, just to to, to uh, go th with the suggestion that Warmaster gave. Uh, yeah, the allure of the knuckle knuckleball is tempting. Oh, yeah, Quantrill would be... An, if we got Quantrill, he would be for our rotation. What we're thinking about with Waldron here is a guy for long relief. So don't worry, bringing in Waldron does not mean no to Quantrill. It just means that we're looking at a different long relief option to bring in the knuckleball uh, potential. Uh, pretty much, would anybody get this done? Pretty much, eh? Okay, so we could throw in a, a D-rated uh, relief pitcher, I guess, in Christian Hernandez. Okay, let's do that. Christian Hernandez and Jake Irvin. Jake Irvin, thanks for your service here in Montreal. But Warmaster, one of our AGMs, has spoken. He says go after him. He's had good success with him. We're going to listen to the collective. Matt Waldron from San Diego, from uh, the Padres. 60 mile per hour uh, knuckleball. Let's see what he can do in his repertoire. He'll come in and play long relief, and hopefully it works out for us. So thank you to the Padres, and we're going to get a new long relief pitcher in the system, uh, in the rotation, or I guess I should say in the bullpen. Uh, right there. So Rutledge comes out. Perf, perf, perf. Love it, Warmaster. Uh, so Rutledge comes out for Cavalli. Waldron could even enter the rotation if need be. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Long relief. Why did the game do this? Hold on a second. Is, uh, is everything set to auto again? Hey, so everything's set to auto. Hold on. Since we did, thank goodness we didn't do anything yet. Let me just exit. Uh, load save file, expose, okay, thank goodness nothing happened yet. Let me turn this off before it changes all my lineups. So, manual everything, because I, I changed it all because of a video I'm making on the side. Manual, injury management, manual, yeah, manual everything. Okay, thank goodness. Let's make that trade again with the Padres. Then we'll finally get started. <laughs> Padres... Waldron for Irvin and Hernandez. Thank you. Always. <laughs> Thank you. Rotation. Waldron's there. Okay. Shoof. Finally. I think the batting order is fine. We did it last episode, so should be okay to go. Um, wasn't there... Oh, who's that, who's that French guy? Julien, is that his name? Someone had suggested him as well. Uh, Edouard Julien. Yeah, Edouard Julien. He would definitely be, like, the main guy we gotta go after eventually sometime in the series. As a Quebec-born player, the media's gonna go ballistic for him. Don't Edouard Julien, we wanna think about getting him sometime in this series, I would hope. Edouard Julien at second base. Trading for him right now would be a little difficult, I think. As a second baseman, I would have to send back Luis Garcia with B potential, and then... Yeah, it's, uh... It'll be tough to make it happen. The McMedia is going to love it. Yeah. And finally, Naylor. Bo Naylor is... Oh, he's a catcher. I thought he was in the outfield. I'm so sorry. Bo Naylor. He's a catcher. I did not know at all. So Bo, he is in Cleveland. Great. Okay, let's finally get this party started now. Game one of episode four in season number two. Uh, game two of... <laughs> hold on. <laughs> game two of season two in episode four but the first game of this episode. At City Field in New York, Josiah Gray on the mound. There we go. Also, Rogers from the Marlins. He's a low overall, but if you could turn into a starter, he'd be the second best pitcher on the team. We'll keep those guys in consideration, Warmaster. Don't be afraid to say it again. I just don't want to make another trade just, just yet. So, Senzel will lead off here against the lefties, I suppose. Let's do it against David Peterson, 81 overall here on the Mets. Game two of the season. Lead off hitter is a flyout. Lane Thomas strikes out. Joey Manessis grounds out. Lindor grounds out. Nemo uh, flies out. A live sim? How do you mean, Theodore? Like, go in to watch the game for nine innings? That would take about an hour, honestly. Josiah Gray, five pitches in his repertoire. He had a good season last year as our ace. 
he's going to now be in a secondary role, but still, it's not like he it doesn't change, affect his playing time. It's not like a backup goalie or something. Uh, double there from Nimmo. Three. Alvarez strikes out. J.D. Martinez against the team that he was just on last season, for which he hit 34 home runs. Signed one year, $9 million with us. First swing, he singles. J.D. gets on first. Luis Three. Garcia strikes out. Kiebert Ruiz, fielder's choice, get him to first. Stone Garrett, two-run home run from Stone Garrett. Let's go. Great start. Dylan Cruz, he had 114 at-bats, played in 29 games last season. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, Tudor. The, the, um, cri the critical moments will go in for some of those, for sure. Dylan Cruz, he's going to get his first full season this year. He played in 29 last year. Now this is his first full season. He singles. C.J. Abrams will strike out. All right, bottom of the second. Strike out. Ground out. Error gets him to first. Taylor stolen. Taylor error. Whoa. Back-to-back -back errors. What's going on here? Uh, fielding error. Back-to-back -back errors by C.J. Abrams. Whoa. Fielding error by shortstop C.J. Abrams. Two errors in two plays by the same player. That's rare. Ty France flies out to get him out of the jam. C.J. saying thank you to, uh, to Gray. Senzel. Solo home run for Nick Senzel. Let's go. Lane Thomas flies out. Manessis grounds out. J.D. singles two for two on the day. Garcia will walk for Kiebert. Fielder's choice. Bottom of the third, Lindor fly out. McNeil ground out. Nimmo double. He's two for two. Alvarez grounds out. Garrett grounds out. Cruz will walk. Abrams sack bunts him over for Senzel. Hoo -hoo -hoo! Nick Senzel, two run home run. Two for three on the day. It's his second home run. His second home run of the evening. I mean, his first start of the year against the lefty. Nick Senzel eats it up against the lefties. Thomas will single. Manessis grounds out. Whew. Let me take a little sip here. A bit of a uh, dry throat. He's safe. Single, ground out, ground out. Single runners on the corners for Ty France, who walks to load the bases for Francisco Lindor. Fielder's choice. Well done. All right. J J.D. Martinez, he's two for two on the day. Jose Buto coming in now. Make it three for three as he gets another single. Garcia flies out. Ruiz will single for Stone Garrett, who pops up. Dylan Cruz grounds out. All right. Bottom of the fifth. Strikeout. Strikeout. Ground out. Nice. CJ grounds out. Senzel flies up. And Lane Thomas pops up. Yurias will single. This, you guys trying to steal here? Pick off first. Pick off first. Pitch. Strikeout. Pitch. Single. Runners on first and second for Taylor, who strikes out. France strikes out. Well done. Top of the seventh now. Manassis will walk for Martinez, who's three for three. He walks. Runners on first and second. Great opportunity for Garcia, who pops up. For Kiebert, who flies out. For Stone, who grounds out. Classic. On base, on base. Out, out, out. <sighs> okay, so bottom of the seventh now. Gray, solid six innings. I think uh, I'm going to give him these three, in, and we're going to go from there. Three. Lindor, strikeout. Oof. Three. McNeil, strikeout. He's still dealing. Nimmo, ground out. Wow. Okay, we'll give him a break after that. What, a, what an outing from Gray. Cruz grounds out. Abrams will single. Senzel fields his choice. Thomas will single. Runners on first and second for Manessis. Who grounds out. All right, Josiah Gray. Seven innings, no earned runs, nine strikeouts. Take a bow. What a night for him. We're going to bring in uh, Hunter Harvey now to set it up. Hunter Harvey, ground out, fly out, strike out. Well done. JD, three for three. Oh, he's four for four and five for five for getting on base. JD Martinez, have yourself a night. Luis Garcia, fielder's choice. Kiebert, double play. All right, Hunter Renfro now. Uh, do we keep Hunter in there? Well, no, let's get Matt Barnes. We've got to give Matt Barnes some innings here. Matt Barnes didn't look too good last game, so we'll give him tonight. Single, fly out, strike out, good. Ah, there we go. That's what we needed to see from, from uh, Matt Barnes. Expos win 5 nothing. Senzel 2 for 5 with two home runs. As we shut out the Mets, Josiah Gray, what a night for him. I don't know how he wasn't player of the game, but what an evening. All right, so now if we sim another day, it'll be next week. 8-5 win against the Mets to finish that series. Here against the Twins, Dylan Cruz, ooh, out for a day or two. Okay, thank goodness, keep him active. 11-1 loss to, to break our winning streak. Same as last season. We started 3-0 and we lost game four. Uh, then a 4-2 loss. Cruz will come back into the lineup. Uh, it was Garrett who replaced him, yeah. Nice game for the X's. 
Who was in, uh, who was he in for here? Was it Stone again? Was Cruz in against, yeah, Cruz is also in against lefties. Or is it Siri who are, no, I guess it's Cruz. I want Stone to play. We'll see as things uh, as things develop. Jose Siri's got to pick it up for sure, at some point. Luis batting 0.95. Come on, buddy, have good contact. Wake up a little. Uh, let's put Siri uh, 0.91 on 0.95. Let's swap the 0.91s and 0.95s. Let's sw swap them up. 3.50 C.J. Abrams, but that's uh, most against righties, I would think. Cry. Okay. Back to it in the calendar. Six nothing. So three straight wins, then three straight losses. Great. Rod, heart, back stiffness. Keep them active. 5-1 loss. Oh my goodness. And another loss. That's uh, And the Marlins have an offer for us. Braxton Garrett. Interesting. Braxton Garrett. No, that's not who I, Okay, it was who I thought he was, but... Yeah, Braxton Garrett for Elijah Green. Not moving a top prospect for that. Uh, okay, now it's time to do the scouting. So three straight wins, followed by five straight losses. Great. Um, scouting. All right, so here's the big... Mo Actually, we should probably check our scouts first. Because we might get a new scout here. Hold on. Uh, no, contract. Staff contract. Scouts. So do we want to hire a new staff, a new contract out here? So we have 11.7 in budget. We could hire this guy, fire this guy Damien and hire someone who's making about 90. If we scroll down to the 90s, or even up here... Like this guy, Giancarlo Masterton, Masterson, excuse me, wants 90. So if I try to hire this guy and fire that guy, that leaves us with $600 in budget. Beautiful. Okay, so that gets one better scout on board. That's big news for us. Now, let's start scouting. How do I usually do this? Do I go, do I start by scouting position? No, first let's discover. Yeah, discover is first. So where do we want to be going for exactly? Positional needs. Starting pitcher, catcher, first base. We could definitely use a first baseman of the future. First, second. Yeah, first and second for sure, I would think, eh? Garcia, I don't know. Okay, so let's start discovering. Let's start at first base. Let's do a lot of first base work. So let's go infield, central. Infield, international. And infield, east. Let's get some uh, some easy, some uh, French Canadians in there, Okay. We'll probably do that for a couple of weeks, okay? 7-1 win, finally we're back on board. 7-1 win again, finally. 3-2 win, so three straight wins, five straight losses, followed by three straight wins. All right, four straight wins, five straight wins. All right, then we lose. So one nothing win, 5-4 win, 7-4 loss against the Braves. We're 8-6. Here's our first high, high important situation. Home team down by one, run, one runner on base. Matt Barnes looking to close it out. All right, let's go in. We're not going to go in for everyone. There's a lot that we're going to skip, but let's hop into this one then. Let's see. Can Matt Barnes close out the Braves? Here's Orlando Arcia. Against Orlando Arcia. Three with three. Let's see what he's got. In Atlanta, forcing just outside. You got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get no outs. Runner on first. Of course, the Expos swept the poverty Marlins. Another forcing that maybe both those those pitchers could have maybe been called strikes, but they're both called the ball. Leave a like if you haven't already for some good luck from Matt Barnes. Two and zero delivery swung on. That's put into play, and that's right up the middle. That's going to be a nice single to get a runner over. Move the runner over to second but not enough to third so runners on first and second with no outs come on matt sean murphy two for three on the day delivery out splitter outside i think i'm not sure which braves uniforms those are Got yeah, that that gear is an eyesore. It's because the Expo's gear is pretty much just white. Right and I was trying to figure out what to do, and I said, ah, forget it. it. <laughs> I think we can always, we can always fix it in the offseason. Finally, a splitter called a strike, but similar one that was called a ball. Barnes not wanting to attack the strike zone. There you go. That's swung on. All right. Hold on. Double play to second. Back to first. Well done. Great double play right there. 
first to second, back to first, the 3-6-3 three, three double play. Love a little 3-6-3. Three, three. The runner at second does advance to third, but that 3-6-3 three, three double play gives us two outs now. Just staying on the bag. Look at that. 70s uniforms? Cool. So it's rare to, I didn't know the computer chose those by itself sometimes. Forcing inside. Just need one more out here. Matt Barnes got himself out of a little bit of a jam here. Celebrate Jackie Robinson Day with the show regional on our Tuesday broadcast. That 12-6 is in for a strike. Michael Harris the second, batting 182 with runners in scoring position. 1-1 one, one delivery, 12-6 again, this time outside, or should I say inside. Delivery, woo, four seam gets him looking, 2-2 two two now, good pitch. Delivery, no, no, doesn't go for that one, full count, Kellenich now, on deck. Struck out earlier. Here we go. Tying run on first. Winning run at the dish. The delivery. Inside. Excuse me. Outside. I should say again. And he walks him. Walks him with the full count. The splitter just outside. And that'll bring Kalinich up now. Jared Kalinich 0 for 4 on the day. Runners on first and third. One out away. Swung on and missed. 12 6 gets him swinging. Two outs. Both the tying and winning runs are up. Oh one, that one's Next way outside. Twelve six again. One one. If that's Angel Hernandez at the strike, you're exactly right. Oh Ooh, no! Oh, Kalinich walks it off for the Braves. Oh, Matt Barnes blows it. Oh, no. Jared Kalanich walks it off for the Braves. We were so close. All right, Matt Barnes, you're out of the closing spot for now. Look at him go. Oh, uh, we lose a heartbreaker in Atlanta. Matt Barnes takes the loss. Yeah, of course he does. Walking two. Ruby's a two for four. Right, for sure, doggy. <laughs> okay, let's see what the numbers have looked like up until this point. We'll pause, of course, for the scouting. Barnes, 6.35 ERA, three saves, one blown. Hunter Harvey, 3.86, two holds. Caleb Ferguson's looks really good as well. But I won't start digging into the relief just yet, I don't think. Barlow hasn't even pitched yet. Okay, so let's do this. Barnes, take a little bit of a break. Swap here, swap here. Harvey's going to close. I can't, dog. Yeah, I can't. It doesn't make sense for the, for the series right now. Not never, but right now it doesn't make sense. Harvey's going to be closer for now. Ferguson's going to set up, and Barnes is going to go to just mid-relief for a second. Waldron looking very good right now. <sighs> wow. Rutledge, tough numbers. Uh, really good numbers from Gray, tough from Soroka, good from Cavalli. Okay, still a small sample size. Back to the scouting. One prospect discovered. What? That's all they dis... No, no, I'm not going to waste my time with discovery. Let's just scout the position then. So scout position, scout first base central, scout first base international. No, Barlow hasn't even pitched an inning yet. We're going to put him as, as closer yet. Scout first base east. Okay, let's do that for a couple of weeks now. Okay, 2-1 loss, 2-0 loss, 6-9 loss. If we're not ready yet, we're not ready yet, but it's too bad. 10-2 uh, win, we're 9-10. 5-4 win, 2-1 win. Keep them active. We're 11-10. Only a game and a half back of the Phillies right now. Back to scouting. There we go. 5 prospects scouted, 9 prospects scouted, 7. So let's go away from central. And go to the west for first base. Let's see if there's more over there. Okay, 7-2 win. Good. Okay, very high. Score tied. Bases loaded. Matt Waldron, the knuckleballer. He's here. It's uh, the top of the ninth with two outs and the bases loaded. Whoa. Yeah, I want to see this one. Top of the ninth. Bases loaded with two outs. Only need one out. And the knuckleballer is trying to get through it here. 
in a 0-0 game. So two down, next to hit. Here at home in Montreal at Stade Olympique. The Olympic Stadium, Matt Waldron, the knuckleballer. Here he goes with the bases loaded. He wants that knuckle. Oh, look at that knuckleball. Come on, force out at second. Beautiful. Oh, look at that knuckleball. Waldron gets him swinging, and it's a ground out to second. And Waldron gets us out of a little pinch there. Love it. Uh, we'll return to simulating now the rest of the game. Uh, what's up now? Okay, now we're in the bottom of the 10th. We're down by one, two runners on base. Bottom of the 10th, one out. So another high important situation. CJ Abrams now, let's Where's check CJ it out. CJ, buddy. We're runner on first and second, down by one, with one out. Tying run on second, winning run on first. First pitch is a ball. Here at home in Montreal. That's going to be a circle change that's just down low enough. And inside enough, I should say. Down low and just inside enough for a strike. One and one. CJ one for four in the day. Swings on that. It's going to be a tag out for the runner. And then out at first. Double play. And the Braves win again. Oh, Waldron takes the loss. He did so well, but he takes the loss. Hold on, doggy. Hold on. We're not just trading for players for fun. We gotta wait and find the right moment. But he's definitely on our to do on our uh, on our wish list. A submarine pitcher. All right, two one loss. That was a sad one. Mike Soroka elbow inflammation. Okay, we'll keep him active. Seven one win. Good. Uh, sorry. Let's go to the pitching rotation here. So Waldron's gonna move in. Yeah, Waldron will move into the rotation. Yeah, you know what? I think I might trade for oh uh, Shohei while we're at it. Why not? Uh, 5-1 loss. Here the White Sox. 7-1 win. Okay, Soroka's back. Let's say give, uh, let's give Waldron a start. Where's Waldron? Bueller, Gray, Waldron will be here. We'll give him a start against the A's, then we'll get uh, Soroka back in. Okay, back to scouting. 3 scouted, 9 scouted, 7 scouted. Okay, so let, I'm gonna let them keep scouting first base and east. It seems like there's a lot of first basemen in the first, in international and east. So, I'm gonna have this guy... Go and scout more starting pitchers instead. I guess international for now. That's usually where the most are. So we'll do international for starting pitchers while the first baseman keep getting scouted. 5-4 win. 4-3 win with Waldron. There you go. 6-4 uh, loss. 4-2 loss. Keep active. Uh, Auto-utilize. And here we are. All right, so we're 16 and 15 here. Let's check the uh, organizational update. Garvin Alston, tough time in double A. Chase Petty had a tough time in triple A. Will Frizzle tore it up in double A. James Wood, outstanding month in triple A. Good to see, definitely. Hoffman looked good in double A. And Nick Abel looked good in triple A as well. Great. So, looking at the starting pitchers. Bueller, Gray looking good. Gore as well. Soroka getting better. Nick Abel, really good numbers in triple A. I wouldn't be surprised if he's called up sooner rather than later. Rutledge, so-so. Waldron, solid. Cavalli, okay. Petty got roughed up a little. Uh, some other good numbers. Uh, Francesco Rodriguez, we just, our, our first round, no, yeah, our first round pick, I believe 10th overall. It was him, right? Francesco Rodriguez? Yeah, our 10th overall pick from last year, already in double A, putting up very good numbers right now at 18 years of age. That's really impressive. Uh, in relief, relief's doing great right now. Um... Good to see there, but it's the close. Yeah, it's Barnes. Barnes who's struggling. Hart is looking good. Uh, Kiebert has dropped to a 73. What? Or is he always a 73? I thought he was a 74. How's Hoffman doing in double A? Batting 179. Manessi's batting 194. <sighs> Rosario, okay, Garcia woke up. That's good. Senzel batting 333. We've got to get him in the lineup a bit more, probably. CJ, 299. Vavret, 143. JD, 293. Siri batting 120? What? Siri batting 120. We gotta make some changes here to the, to the uh, lineup. Whoa. Okay, so against righties, uh, we'll keep it mostly like that. Manessi's gonna move down. Siri's coming out. Whoa, 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 Siri. Senzel's looked great, but he's not as good against uh, righties. Maybe Vavra needs to get some... Uh, or even, no, Stone Garrett probably needs to get more time. Yeah, Stone needs to come in. Stone's coming in for Siri. 
Yeah, Stone's coming in for Siri. Uh, Keybert's gonna go here. Who's struggling? Manassi's, you're going number nine for a little bit. Uh, Keybert's been doing well. I want him to do even better, so I'm gonna give him the five spot there. Let's do that. Keybert grew? Or maybe from his original overall, but from the start of the season, I thought he didn't. And against lefties, Manassi's gonna move down against lefties as well. Siri can stay in against... No, against, in against nobody. He's going to come out entirely for a little bit. He's got to learn his lesson. Hold on. So here, who's DHing? JD, of course. JD's DHing. Uh, Garcia will move up for Manessis. He's been hot. CJ can even move up a spot there too. But Siri can't be in this spot. Sorry, no. So Siri's going to go here. Against lefties. I'll keep him in against lefties, I suppose. Manessis can go there. CJ's been doing well, even if he's not as good against lefties. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he's not... I, I can see his average, though, can't I, against lefties? Can't we see that? Uh, no, not even. Uh, you gotta, it's somewhere, there's somewhere you can look at that. Player statistics, yeah, hold on. Somewhere you can see that. At bats, average versus righties and lefties. So CJ, 261 against righties. He's 474 against lefties? Because he plays so little against lefties, but okay. So we'll keep CJ in then against lefties, no problem. I mean, not in, but just in a higher position in the lineup. So we'll put him in the five. Cruz there, Keybert here. Okay, let's try this against lefties. That'll be what we do against lefties. And in the rotation... Mm, yeah, Soroka's going to come back in for Waldron, but Waldron's been impressing me. Cavalli might lose his spot. Waldron has been impressing me very much. Let me make sure he's still number one. Barlow hasn't pitched too much. We have a lot of relief pitchers, that's why. Ferguson looking good. Harvey, okay. All right, we're good to continue. Uh, yes. 3 nothing loss. Uh, very high home team down by one. One runner on base. Now we'll go through this one. Since the end, Expos win 3-2. to two. Love it. Uh, Cole Henry, keep him active. Rays are offering us. Aaron Saval, is it Saval or Chivale? Aaron Saval, good pitcher, 29 years old, B potential, 81 overall, and Cooper Kinney, uh, a random shortstop for Dylan Cruz. I would not want to do that. A potential, no, I would not want to do that, but thank you. Uh, yes, back to the scouts. How are we looking here? Nine scouted, seven scouted, 32 scouted, of course, 32 of those get scouted. I think I'm going to do another week of exactly that. Then we'll start looking at prospects maybe individually a little. 4-1 uh, loss against the Orioles. 2-0 loss. Marcus Brown out 1-2 weeks. Put him on the 10-day. Uh, auto fix. 4-2 loss. 2-1 loss. Yikes. We're 17-21 and 21 now. Scouting. Okay, so let's cancel all of these. And let's start thinking about players we want to scout individually just for a moment. We have picks 5, 42. We want to think about those. So first and foremost, so Forrest Lopez... A uh, uh, catcher, uh, what should I say, uh, projected to go first overall. That would be great. If he drops to five, that's very good. So I definitely want to scout Forrest Lopez because he might be available. You never know. He might be available. Next, uh, Harmon Quinlan. What a name. At shortstop. We have CJ Abrams, but also wouldn't be a bad idea to look at him. Um, not as well of a job, Joe. Does the, AI, does the AI do a good job of spreading innings pitched across the uh, pitchers? Not usually for relief pitchers super well, I gotta admit. Lenny Parsons. Oh, this is just a legend waiting to be made. Look at that stash. Gary taught him well from Texas. Woohoo, Lenny! Let's get Lenny scouted. We'll see if we can get him. Lenny and... Uh, I don't want to go after... Like, I wouldn't use my first pick on a relief pitcher or a closing pitcher. Frederick Schroth? 76 to 95? Or Matthew Lucas? 80 to 99. Let's scout Matthew Lucas here. And by the way... Okay, and then I look at first baseman next time. Let's... Yeah, he'll be 100% scouted, which is good to see. Matthew Lucas will be. Lenny to stash. Okay. Let's see what happens with them over the next week. 6-1 loss. 14-0 loss. Oh my goodness. Nick Senzel. Keep him active. 2-0 win. 2-1 win. 5-2 loss. Nick Senzel put him on the bench. Marcus Brown. Uh, activate. Bench. Thank you. Okay. So Senzel's going to come in. 
Everyone's cold. Everyone is cold. Wow. I've never seen a lineup like this. Everyone is cold. Almost everyone, but still. So Senzel comes back in against lefties. And against righties, he stays out. Is that what we had? Rosario's in. Batting 228. Up to 75 overall. Batting 228. Garcia's average fell as well. Poof. These are some tough, tough batting averages. Oh, goodness. Emmanuel Rodriguez. Let's get him some more at-bats. Let's get him against righties. Let's get Lenny... Uh, Emmanuel Rodriguez in. Think Lenny. Let's get Emmanuel Rodriguez in against them. Let's go... Uh... Let's keep Stone in against lefties, but we'll t put Emmanuel Rodriguez in against righties just for a little bit, just to give him something. And Stone will stay in. I know he's been one of the only guys who's been doing something well, but Stone Garrett will come in against lefties instead. Series coming out entirely. Uh, we'll go something like this. Stone's been looking good. Siri is almost a trade candidate at this point. That's crazy. Uh, and then we have to, scouting. Okay, so Matthew Lucas is 85-95. Lenny Parsons, 80% scouted. Ranked two by our scouts, six by the league. He might be available there. Let's. Do we want to get him fully scouted? We'll see. And Forrest Lopez, he looks very good also. But Lenny Parsons would be hard to say no to. So should we scout him a little bit more? Oh, he's 80% scouted. I think uh, we have enough to know about Lenny. Lefty, Lenny the lefty. Matthew Lucas, we know enough about him as well. Okay, let's look at first base now. Uh, first base. Anyone who's interesting at first base? Eesh, not even a lot that's interesting. Just looking at potentials. 75 to 96 maybe. Ouch. Uh, the batting average, that's what I hate. <laughs> 59 to 91. 94, 77. Eh. 60 to 92. Let's just get them scouted, whether we like them or not. Let's just get some of them scouted who have high potential potential. And who was the other guy? 71 to 93? No, 75 to 96. Leandro Francisco. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, Lenny the lefty. Yeah, the very low batting average. All right, let's keep going. Mackenzie, welcome to the stream. Marcus Brown, auto-utilized. So 6-0 loss, 7-6 win, 11-6 loss. Elijah Green, auto, uh, very high. 3-3 game, bases loaded, top of the ninth, two outs. We'll sim the end of this one. Expos wins 5-3, love it. 5-3 win, 4-2 win. First base class, you hate that. Yeah, unfortunate. 6-2 loss, then a 6-3 win. We're somehow still not that bad. Like, I would think it, we'd be way lower with how we've been performing. But 23 and 28 is our record. Okay. Leandro, I'm happy to see that. 70 to 89. 62 to 88. Ugh, none of them are that interesting, even at first base. Sorry, just want to look at first baseman. 60 to 92. 71 to 93, we'll scout him. That's about it, eh? So let's spend a little bit more time just on the top guys, and then we'll call it, probably, on for scouting first base. Um, we can scout this guy one more time. Mac Kovalenko. What a name. Where's he from? Illinois. Mac Kovalenko. Uh, can I change priority? 40? No, it doesn't change anything, eh? Just interest. No. Okay, 5-3 uh, loss, Phillies 8-0 loss, 6-0 loss, 11-1 loss, so we scored one run in three games, 5-1 loss, so we scored two runs in four games, 6-3 win, and 4-3 loss. We're 24-34, and 34. this is more like how we probably should be performing at this point. How we doing? Struggling down in AA is Galvin Alstron again, Tyler Schaaf struggled, Dalen Lil tore it up, James Wood looked good, that's nice. Hoffman looked good. Abel strong again. Okay, so I'm thinking at a certain point here, we're going to call up Mick Abel and trade away one of our pitchers probably. Uh, like maybe uh, Cavalli gets traded at this point if he's not going to grow. Maybe Cavalli gets traded and Mick Abel takes his spot in the rotation. Then in relief, we're looking okay in relief still. Barnes hasn't, he's pitched like, he's seen one batter. It's like, it's not a good distribution. Ruiz batting 250. Manessi's 242. Rosario 241. Garcia down to 233 now. 
Senzel, 289. Abrams. Vavra, 184. But he's not getting a lot of uh, time. Let's try putting Vavra in against righties, maybe. JD down to 247. Siri at 142. Cruz, 249. Rodriguez not getting enough at-bats. Should we send him down? Maybe we should. Rodriguez goes... Here's what we're going to do. Rodriguez is going down. Let's let him play and breathe in AAA. Rodriguez is going down. Uh, Jack Dunn is going down to Class A. Da Jack Dunn. Okay? To make room. In the right field, Stone Garrett's looking good. Lane Thomas struggling. James Wood is going to get a call up soon. Not yet. James Wood's getting a call up soon. For right now, I might want to see uh, Mick Abel. I might. We're going to wait and see. In AAA, could I call someone else up? No, but it wouldn't make sense, because there, there hasn't been good distribution. Can we play with 25? I'd prefer to play with 25, even. It's like, these guys, they're not seeing any batters. How come this guy sees 21 innings, but then this guy sees 8, this guy sees 6? You know? Or is there is too many innings going to our long relief guys? Guy, Yeah. Maybe too many innings are going to the long relief guys. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Dexter. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Or match, would you say? Uh, sorry, Didero Green looks good. He does. Uh, so we, have, we have one too many guys in long relief, probably. Relic has been good, though. Oh, it's Data. I see, I see. The android is in the sky. Should we send one of them down? Cavalli goes down, maybe? Does he have... He could use a minor league... We could use a minor league option on him to send him down. Let him try... Before we trade him... Okay, that's an idea. Before we trade him, let's help him try and find himself. Cavalli's going to go down to AAA. Maybe take everyone out of long relief and just put them in mid-relief and set up. That's true as well, but I think what I want to do as well is give Cavalli a bit more breath. Let him play in AAA. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Shoffs and go down to AA. Or even to single A. Okay. That'll be what we do. To let Cavalli breathe a little and play in triple A. Uh, and then scouting. Yeah, scouting. We have Kovalenko, 68 to 84. Oof, so good thing we didn't draft him. 64, 89. 73, 89. Okay, so Sean Latch could be an option with a later pick. Let's keep him being scouted. Let's go back to scouting the top prospects now. So Forrest Lopez, we know enough about him. Lenny Parsons, we're excited about him. Harmon Quinlan, let's scout him, right? We should probably get, we should probably have him scouted just to know. And then Donny Dubois from Germany. Whoa, closing pitcher. Frederick Schroth, Howard Pritchett, Johnny Henson, 65 to 99. Yeah, let's get him scouted. Same with Seth Silva after, and even Sean Armstrong. Eric Kilgore, Kat, yeah, we still have a lot of guys we want to scout here. So, Johnny Henson, yeah, Johnny Henson. Let's do another week here. Okay, so auto-fix lineups. Yeah, let's go auto-fix for, no, 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 not, not in the MLB. Everywhere else there'll be auto-fix. So here, I want Vavra to get some playing time against righties. But he's not going to play shortstop. He's not, he's not going to play right field. He'll play DH. And Martinez, who can play in the outfield, he'll go in the outfield. Vavra's going to DH. He has good defensive numbers, though. Abrams, Rosario. Maybe Rosario can DH. Or even... No, Vavra plays third. Rosario comes out. He'll stay against lefties. Rosario comes out. And Siri will DH. Let's give him some more at-bats. So Siri DHs against righties. That's how we're going to do it now. Let's get Vavra in here. Cruz is going to go there. Keybird here. Oh, you're catching up, Dexter. You're almost there. You're almost there. Joey can move up. Yeah, against righties will look like this. And against lefties will look like that. Unless Rosario comes in against lefties. Rosario looks CJ's here. Uh, no, Rosario's just going to come out entirely, I suppose, for a little bit. Okay. So Siri's back in against righties, and so is Vavra. Garrett is in against lefties. Okay, let's do that. All of our rookies are getting a chance right now. 
Cruz is playing all at all times. And we sent down Rodrigo so he could get some more breath. And Vavra is getting some at-bats here. So yeah, all the rookies are getting their time. Okay. Are you sure? I thought he could play third base. Oh, and we need a pitch. Oh my goodness. Lineups. Vavra. Oh no, good catch. We will go... Can Garcia play third? Yes. Garcia. Vavra can play second. Garcia. Yeesh. Our accuracy at 42. Maybe Garcia should be... Uh... Hold on. Vavra can play outfield? Yeah. Okay, outfield's going to Vavra. And uh, JD's going to DH. Now, Rosario did drop in potential. Hold on a second. Shorts up. Garcia is going to second base. He's a second baseman. And then Siri. No, Siri will... No. I'm uh, mixing myself up here. Vavra will... No, I want Vavra in the infield. So Garcia will DH. And Vavra will play second and JD plays right field. And then I have Siri here. Where does Siri go? Can crew, who can play in the infield? I also put Garcia at third, but I didn't want Garcia at third. Whatever. Let's just get them. Let's just get them in the at bats. Uh, auto fix the lineups. There we go. Marlins are offering us Braxton Garrett for Dylan Cruz. No, <laughs> we just said no before to Cruz for Garrett plus somebody. Three one win. Rotation Waldron. They put Waldron in now. Uh, so that'll help out. So Waldron gets a rotation spot for the moment with Cavalli sent down. Rutledge is going to go there, and hopefully our mid-relief guys will see more innings now. In AAA, what did they do in AAA? Uh, Cavalli's in long relief? No, 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 no. Uh, Tim Cates going to go long relief, probably. 67 overall seat potential. No, he'll go long relief. Powell, relief. Why are the relief pitchers in long relief? Starting relief. Relief goes here. Long relief. Three mid. One setup. Rod Hart the closer. There we go. Cavalli didn't look good in the two innings he played in AAA. Come on, Cavalli. Whew. Okay. Uh, back to the MLB. Let's see this. Very high. Home team up by two. Bases loaded. Ooh! This is a big moment for Jose Siri. We're down by two. It's the top of the ninth with one out and the base is loaded. Garrett on first, Vavra on second, Cruz on third, Jose Siri at the plate. Tying run on second, go ahead run on first. One down. Jose Siri down batting Jose 139 Siri. this season, Pretty 0 for amazing, 3 yeah. on the day. Huh? Here we go. Power and speed, quite a threat. I mean, you're talking about someone that could steal your bag and go deep. First pitch, 102, four seam right down the heart, and Jose watches it fly by. Yeah. Real athletic player, and who's able to do the baseball mechanic. And he watches another one come right by. Oh my goodness. Expos and Reds lead MLB with 10 of the top 100 prospects, so that's cool. And did he go safe? Thank goodness. That's a lot of heat there. Montreal top updated farm system rankings with $225.5 million valuation. Ooh, great farm system here in Montreal. Swung on and missed. Jose Siri strikes out again. Not looking good for his future here in Montreal. CJ Abrams now. Can he be the hero? He's been the hero before. First pitch. Swung on. But that's not going to get down, unfortunately. And we can't even tie up for a run. Orioles win. Yeah. <sighs> Walker Bueller takes the loss, unfortunately. Cruz was two for four. That's good. Vavra was three for four. Nice. Come on, Vavra. You got to grow. I believe in you, Vavra. Vavra, buddy. How's that lineup looking? Vavra batting 226 now. Leafs King, I'm here. I'm watching. I'm on the TV. Toronto Maple Leafs versus Florida Panthers to see Matthews hit 70. Yes, very possible. Very possible that Matthews hits 70 tonight. Okay, 2-1 loss. 9-3 loss. 5-2 loss. Whoa, what happened? Philadelphia. The Phillies. How come their logo just changed? What just happened? Why did their logo just change? Is something happening that I'm missing? Did the game just update? And then it changed back. Was it a special day? Was it a special game? Okay, we won 8-3. to three. 
That's really odd, but cool. Uh, scouting. Someone must have an answer for me there. Uh, Latch, 75 to 87. Quinlan, 84 to 91. And Henson, 67 to 91. So, so. So, Latch, we're done with. Uh, Quinlan, we're done with. 55% scouted. Do you want to scout him some more? Maybe. City Connect logo. They're likely winning City Connects in the game for that. Ah, cool. Thank you. So, scouting all prospects now. Uh, Frederick Schroth. We'll want to see him. Schroth the Sloth. Uh, Eric Malanka. Let's wait at third base. No problem, Leafs King. Enjoy the game. Seth Silva. I know he's an outfielder, but if he's 99 potential, let's check him out, right? And Eric Kilgore at, uh, at catcher. We definitely want to see him. Even Ryan Shedd, though. Even more than Seth Silva. But we'll get them both done eventually. So let's do them. Uh, okay. Scout them up. 5-3 loss. 3-1 loss. Uh, let's sim through this one. Blue Jays beat us 8-6. Oh my goodness. Uh, from the 10-day... Uh, auto fix. 5-1 win. Chase Petty out 1-2 weeks. Keep him active. 4-2 win. TJ White 1-2 weeks. Put him on the 10-day. 3-2 win. We're 29-41. and 41. Rough season. <laughs> okay. 79-92. 66-93. to 68-92. Let's keep scouting these two. Frederick, I probably know enough about. We probably know enough about Frederick. Plus, we want uh, Lenny there anyways, probably. I'm pretty confident that Matthews will hit 70. They'll be uh, trying to get any way they can to make sure he gets it. The Leafs will, I mean. Okay, so let's look at Ryan Shed. Only 30% per week. How do I get it to change? Depends on the scout, I guess, then, eh? What if I have Kilgore and Shed swap? So Giancarlo will scout the catcher instead. Is that what I, ha what I had going? Where'd he go? Oh my goodness. All catchers. Kilgore. 30% per week. This guy is 91 in pitcher, so that should make him better. Starting pitchers. Ryan Shedd, 50% per week. Okay, great. Okay. 7-2 win, 5 nothing win, Robert Hassel at 1-2 weeks, 4-2 loss. Man, everyone's injured in the, the farm system, eh? Matt Barnes, can he close it out? Let's see. Or was it Matt Waldron? Oh, no, it was Matt Barnes. I'll keep him active. And we lost 3-2. Great. Whew. Darren Baker out 3-4 weeks. 8-1 loss, 10-1 win. Place him on the bench. Chase Petty plays on the bench. Okay, man, a lot's happening in the system. So Rutledge came in, but now Waldron will go back. ERAs are shaky. Barlow's seeing more pitch. Finally, they're seeing more innings now. Okay, so it worked out. Uh, Lysiga's looking very good. Harvey's been okay in relief. 14 saves. He's looking all right. That's better. Barnes's numbers are coming down as well. Thank goodness. In AAA... Chase Petty's going to come back to a rotation spot for Tim Kate, who's in long relief, right? No, who's here? Why is this guy here? Kate's going to go. No, Ward will go there. And Petty goes back here. Okay, Cavalli. Come on, Cavalli. Rod Hart, what a monster. Big Rod, 23 saves. Okay, back to it. We're at scouting, right? Yes, we're at scouting. Okay, so we learned more about some of these guys. Uh, a couple opted out for their uh, doctor's exam. 67 to 87. Mm. So it's good we scouted him. He was not as highly ranked as we thought in the end. Eric Kilgore. Okay, I think we know enough about him to say we're interested, but I don't know about a top pick. And Ryan Shedd. Uh, I want to finish off scouting him. I want to know everything about him, honestly. So let's go back to scouting prospects. This guy's better at the pitcher, so let's get a pitcher for him. Morris Bannister, 65 to 99. Yeah, let's do him. Morris Bannister, and let's do a position player for this guy. We're pretty much already done the first baseman. We know the first baseman that we can. Brock Stewart, all right, after this. Brock Stewart. Do we want to look at catchers again? 
We looked at Forrest Lopez. He's going to go high. Could we get someone later? Maybe Bo Rush is our second pick. Bo Rush from New York. All right. Bo Rush. We're on pace to do even to do better than last year? Okay, at least there's that. Uh, players are two, you say here? Brock Stewart. Stewart. Brock Stewart. 71 relief pitcher. 2.06 ERA. Good numbers this year. Signed on at 760K. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. 13 to 4 win. Uh, 68 win pace as compared to 64 last, uh, 66 last year. Okay, at least there's that. Uh, activate, I suppose. 5 3 loss, 5 3 win. Sorry, 5 1 win. Pirates want to offer us Juan, Ye no, Juan uh, Johan Oviedo for, Yo for Juan. Oh, my goodness, for Juan Yepes. We know Oviedo, he was a good relief pitcher for us last year. Uh, tough numbers, though, right now. In exchange for Yepes. I don't mind trading Yepes, but I don't want to bring in another relief pitcher. So it doesn't really work for me. No thanks, Pittsburgh. And then we lose 7 1 against them. Okay, very high. Home team up by two. Bases loaded. We have a 4 2 lead. Hunter Harvey to close it out. Let's get through the uh, draft before we look at any more big situations. Can we hold on for the 4 2 victory? Yes, we do. Great finish there by Hunter Harvey. Uh, Robert Hassel. There you go. 4 2 win. 6 3 win. The draft's coming up now. We have two more scouting assignments to send out. Ryan Shedd ends up being 78 to 93. Good to know. Morris Bannister, 65 to 93. You don't have him fully scouted, though. Bo Rush could look very interesting for our second pick. We have the guy we drafted last year who has like that 90... Was it Ham, Hampson? Hampton? Sam? No. Something like that. We already have a catcher in the system, but I wouldn't mind having a second one. So we have one already, but a second would go a long way. So Bo Rush, I know enough about you to say I'm in very interested. We'll keep scouting Morris Bannister. Uh, this guy's better for position players. So do we want to look at a second baseman? Maybe Brian Tapia could be interesting. Garrett Hoffman, yeah, that's who it was. 75 to 99 looks very interesting too. Brad Ridley, 98 to 93 could be something. You know what? We didn't focus a lot on those unranked players, like uh, those unranked gems. We didn't focus a lot on them. We're focusing a lot on trying to make sure we get a good top pick. Any uh, gem pitchers? Let's look for a gem pitcher who's unranked. No, no donos yet, but that's perfectly fine. Your viewership is donation enough for me. Any unranked guys by the league? Unranked 52, okay. Unranked 60, 68 to 98. This guy's 62, 92. Uh, lower overall for Santos, 68, 98. So just a couple, eh? Okay, so just a couple. Let's do one here. Dirk Katimer. Dirk Katimer. And then next week, in our last week, we'll get the other one. Okay. Hey, Joe. 3-1 win. Ooh, Alston's out for six months. Bye-bye. 2-1 win. 4-2 win. 4-1 win. Hey, three-game win streak. 6-4 loss. 13-10 loss. We're, 12, we're only 12 and a half games back. I say only because it should be like 20 plus. Okay, so Morris Bannister, we learned more about him. Uh, I don't think we'll go after him so much. Brad Ridley looks good for a later pick. Same for, same for Dirk Katimer. 68-88. I want to know more about Brad Ridley. No, I know enough about him. In our last week, we know enough. Uh, so we're going to go pitcher with this one for this scout. Sorry. Uh, pitcher with this scout. Unranked, we know. Unranked 59, Santos will scout. This guy's better with position players. So let's just look in all... Who's an unranked player who's ranked highly by our scouts? Anyone. Anyone. Unranked 41. All right, where you saw him. Anyone. 11. No, it's not going to work. 94.65 already scouted. Not a lot. Unranked 102. Tim McNeil. Unranked 104. Anthony Kondo. This guy is 73.96. So Tim McNeil will be one. And last one, we'll scout another pitcher. Let's look, uh, maybe there's a little closing pitcher gem out here. A little late gem with hype. Who's, like a guy we take a, throw a dart on. Let's scout him now. Like a Len Reigns. No, he's already 22 though. 
any like high random high potential player no okay let's go back to all and sorting backwards going backwards from all players anyone with a 90 oh here 61 to 95 brooks portillo unranked unranked there you go let's see what kind of potential you actually have all right this will be our last week of scouting before the draft it won't be as good of a draft as last year in terms of depth but we should get our top pick should be one who like our top pick this year should be better than our top pick last year but our depth won't be as good i don't think 5-2 win, 7-3 win, 9-4 win, 2-0 win, 4 in a row, 5 in a row, 6 in a row, uh, once two months, 7 in a row, oh my goodness, heading into the draft, we have a 7 game win streak headed into the draft, whoa, okay, so let's add some prospects to who we're looking to go after, let's just throw a bunch of names in there, uh, definitely Lenny Parsons, Lopez, Dubois, just all the top guys. Let's just throw them all in there. Who we've scouted. Everyone, pretty much anyone we've scouted. Let's just throw them in. Doggy coming in with the donor to start it off. Let's get it started in here with the 499. Doggy getting it started before the draft. Let's go. Doggy, let me throw your name in here. Uh, let me see. Where's this note in my files while I'm looking for this? Santos, add to the queue. Uh, 94, add to the queue, add to the queue. Here we go, doggy. Thank you very kindly, my friend. Getting the party started. Picking up from where we left off last episode in Starfleet last stream. Thank you kindly, my friend. So very much appreciated, as always. And we'll try to get a good player in your honor here. Music plays, exactly. That's Just think of it in the background. Doggy wants that player. No, I don't want this guy. Uh, anybody else? Meh. 67, 87, anyone who was scouted well enough. Brooks Portillo ended up having decent potential. Let's throw him in there. Why not? Uh, 68, anyone? Bo Rush. Yeah, we definitely want Bo Rush. Yeah, no kidding. Nice, Dexter. Save me a ticket, buddy. Let's go. Tim McNeil, we'll throw him in there. Brad Ridley, we'll throw him in there. Why not? Uh... Montoya, no. 79, no. Okay, so that's pretty much the draft queue. Let's go to the draft now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. We have the fifth overall selection in the 2025 draft. A's, Pirates, Tigers, Sox. Our number one target is Lenny Parsons. Number two, a happy number two would probably be a Forrest Lopez or a Frederick Schroth. Or Ryan Shed, one of those other uh, pitchers. Let's start the draft. Let's do it. And with the first overall pick, the Pirates take Luis Benitez. Starting pitcher, 75 to 90 potential. Ranked 2 by the league, ranked 16 by us. As long as we don't see that stash, we're good. Pick number 2. No! The Pirates! No! Come on! Lenny! Oh, Lenny. Of course, the Pirates from De Silva to Parsons. They needed another stash in Pittsburgh. Oh. Of course, Lenny to Pittsburgh. Maybe we can trade for him someday. I don't know. The Silva, what a storyline. And then, of course, Frederick Schroth goes third. Oh, who are we going to get now? And let's uh, sim to our pick. And then Harmon Quinlan goes next. So at pick five. Here we are at pick five. Pick five, we could take Forrest Lopez, the number one ranked prospect, who's ranked third by our scouts. I don't want the closing pitcher. Or we go Matthew Lucas, third baseman, 85 to 93 potential. We could go for the starting pitcher prospect, 78 to 93. But that's into the rank 17 now. No, I think it really comes down to... I guess we're not going starting pitcher then. I think it comes down to Lucas or Lopez, catcher or third baseman. Let's think about this. We have three minutes. Forrest Lopez, 22 years old. 83 to 91 potential. 
Looks like he's really good for the contact. Con contact. Power is nothing crazy, but the contact looks very, very good. Okay? Matthew Lucas. Lower contact, higher power. The reversal. Potential 85 to 95. So 83 to 91. 85 to 95. That's better. But Lopez's overall today is 73 to 81, while Lucas, a year younger, is 59 to 69. Lopez could be back in the, could be in the, could be in the MLB by next season. The problem, the honest problem I see with Matthew Lucas is that he only has 39% interest. He also opted out of the doctor's exam. 39% interest means that there's a risk he doesn't sign. Lopez has a 78% interest, so I think it's becoming clear he's healthy as well. I think Lopez is the guy. I think he's the guy. As much as it hurts, he's our catcher of this is he's our cornerstone catcher for the next decade, two decades. Lucas, well, we have uh, we have Brady House at third base. We have no one long term aside from the guy we drafted last year, who's a year younger and like fifty overall. Lopez might already be in, is probably is is already in the seventies. So I think Forrest Lopez is the selection, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's the, the selection at number five. Let's head up to the podium. Bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. Avec le cinquième sélection dans le repêchage, les Expos de Montréal sont fiers de repêcher with the fifth overall selection in the 2025 MLB Draft. The Montreal Expos are proud to select from California, Forrest Lopez. Welcome to Montreal, my friend. Bienvenue à l'équipe, mon ami. Forrest Lopez in the Montreal Expos organization as the catcher of our future. Yeah, also the good defensive numbers. That's good. Forrest Lopez, the number one ranked prospect by the league. And third by our scouts, we get him at number five. That's very good. That uh, Very true. Forrest, box of chocolates, Lopez. Run, Forrest, run. All right, so there you go. There's the fifth overall pick, but the draft is not over yet. We'll definitely want to see who gets drafted uh, in the rest here. No problem, doggy. We can do that. So a lot of our guys went already. Uh, Matthew Lucas goes next, number six to Colorado. How about that? Shed then goes Kilgore, uh, Malanka, Bannister at 23. Bo Rush! We wanted Bo... Oh, no, actually, no. We wanted Bo Rush if we didn't get Forrest Lopez. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Seth Silva goes 25. Donnie Dubois. Okay. So our next selection now at pick number 42. At pick number 42 now. Sean Armstrong is still there. But he's a relief pitcher. I don't know if I'm as interested in relief pitcher. For players we've scouted, uh, Jorge Santos, unranked at 30. We probably want to wait on taking the unranked guy just yet. A lot of the unranked, eh? It might be a bit of a dart throw here. Because the guys who we have scouted are going much later. And I don't want to use pick 42 on a guy who's unranked just yet. Oui, c'est vrai, Joe. Ça, c'est vrai. Yes, we probably just go for a dart throw for someone who has high potential here. Dirk Katimer is a cool name, that's true. Uh, so, Sean Armstrong is a relief pitcher. Relief pitcher, relief pitcher. Oh, all the relief pitchers are here, that's why. So, aside from relief pitchers, Juan Campillo, 65 to 99. Miguel Castillo, 65 to 99. Or Santos, but he's, and he's unranked. So, I'm thinking it's between these, th these two outfielders. Juan Campillo and Miguel Castillo. Both 18, both 65 to 99. Both, like, 39 to 70, high 30s to low 70 potential. Castillo, much better on the contact potential. I like that. And the fielding. He has the reaction, the speed, and the stealing. But Castillo has a lot of everything else. I think Castillo would be the guy here. Miguel Castillo. Third, plus the third base. You know what? We, set, we have a lot of outfield. Third base is probably the guy. That's true. We need corner infield more than we need the outfield. So Miguel Castillo, it's a bit of a dart throw because we didn't have him scouted, but we'll take the guys we have scouted later on. Thank you, Nappy. Miguel Castillo, bienvenue à l'équipe. 
let's do it with pick number 42. Welcome to the Montreal Expos. Miguel Castillo. Okay, next pick. Only one of our other guys went, actually. Oh, that's good. Uh, Juan Campillo. Miggy, welcome. Uh, only one of our guys who we had pinned went. I'm not sure who it was. I probably already passed by. Okay, so a lot of our guys are still here at 79. That's great. At 79, we still have all the guys we wanted with Santos, Katamar, all those guys. Unranked, but, dra but ranked 30. Santos, let's not wait any longer on him. Yes, he's unranked, but he's ranked 30th by our scouts. I'm sure there's other teams who have him highly routed, uh, scouted as well. So Santos, let's go ahead and draft him. Santos, welcome to the team. Another 18-year-old. 72 to 96 potential. Unranked by the league, but ranked 30th by our scouts. Oh, it was Brooks Portillo who went. Thank you. Next pick, Tim McNeil is still out here. That's good to see. Tim McNeil is still out here for 109. For second base, I think that's what the move here. I think that's the move. If we look at all scouted players, no one else has high potential like that. Maybe Francisco, but he's still going to go in a while. So yeah, Tim McNeil's the move here. Jeff McNeil's brother at second base. Tim McNeil, welcome. 19 years old at 109. Next pick at 139. Second to last pick. Uh, if we look at scouted players. Miguel Calderon. Francisco is probably the guy here at first base. Yeah, here's our first baseman we were waiting for. Let's go ahead and take him now. Leandro Francisco. Let's get him. The other guy? This was the guy, no? Leandro Francisco. Let's draft him. First base prospect in the system. Very nice. Currently injured. That's not good, but he's 18. So, And our last pick at 169. We could go for a guy we've scouted. Maybe 66 to 99 potential. Or we just look at all players, and we take an, ah, like a Colt Donovan, 80 to 99. Like a guy like that. Like just a total dart throw, but hope, cross our fingers. Anthony Hartman, 26 to 50 overall, though. Yeah, let's go for Colt Donovan, another third baseman. Colt Donovan, welcome aboard. All right, so there's the draft, ladies and gentlemen. There is the draft. We'll see in a few days uh, what their potentials actually are. Hey, by the way, remember, we're on a seven-game winning streak. We're now only 11 and a half games back instead of like 20. And you know what? We're almost at 500. Dodgers, hey, we beat them, make it eight in a row. Eight game winning streak. Wow. Uh, one of our players is in the home run derby. Really? Home run derby? It's uh, JD Martinez. There he is. So Otani, Lindor, Seeger. This is another Dana. No, Dabrowski, go not too late, buddy. Castellanos, Judge, Devers, Trout, and J.D. Martinez in the 9 spot with 25 home runs here. Sorry, in the 8 spot. Let's do it. We always love to do the uh, home run derby. We've had bad luck. I've had, I haven't done well in them recently, I'll admit. What's up in the scores here? Let's just pull up the scores. Is it Caps win and they're in? Is that what happens to the Capitals? So if we didn't go on a winning streak, we might have gotten first overall. No, well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there's other bad teams in the league as well. 3-2 Canadians, 2-0 Senators, 4-3 Blue Jackets. It's JD versus Otani. Great. That's not going to be easy. What's that hat? That letter N on his hat. Blue Jackets up 4-3. Could have told you that. That was a trap game. Capitals up 1-0. Ovechkin putting the Caps ahead. Maple Leafs up 2-0. How are we looking here in Dynasty? I didn't want to say in the Discord server. I don't want to say it publicly yet, but... But in the dynasty, I'm getting... Oh, yes! Oh, I'm back in first! I was behind by like 60. And now I'm up by four in the dynasty league. Ooh, in the last couple days. Would we have... Well, I, the season's not over yet, doggy. I can't tell you yet. Okay, home run time. J.D. Martinez. Let's do it. I haven't swung at all in a long time, so let's try it. Beating Otani will not be easy. Power swings all the way. Power swing. Can we get one there? There we go. JD, what a monster. There's another. Just let him fly. Oh, that was late. My apologies. Early. Still made it out, though. There we go. That's a juicy one. We need another one of 440. We only got one. We need one more of 440. Got the 30-second bonus. There we go. What a crusher that was. Woo! Hey, I even got a, uh, I got a uh, trophy for that one. Woo-hoo! 
JD's crushing. Can he beat Shohei though? Can he beat Shohei? This, he needs a break for his energy soon. But as long as he's crushing them, we're gonna keep going. Oh, he hits the foul pole even. As long as he's hitting them, I'm gonna. I don't care about energy. If you're still hitting home runs, I don't care about your energy. I'll give you a break when you're not hitting home runs anymore. That one still gets out. Hey, I, I was looking at the chat. We're at 13 home runs, doggy. It's in the top. I know it's in white, but it's in the top next to JD's name. All right, one more, then it's a break. All right. Take a little break here. Time! Get the energy back up. Walk it off. Walk it off. A little water. All the boys. All right, back at it. Energy's back up. Let's go, JD. Ah, I'm swinging badly now. There we go. Hey. There you go. There you go. Bang. That was how much? 476. Whew. Bonus time. Number 16. 17. Can we beat Shohei, though? Oh, Dexter! I didn't see this! 10 from Dexter! Tried PayPal, was having issues. Let's go. No problem, Dexter. Appreciate you. That was that last one was for you, Dexter. $10 dono from Dexter coming in. We're going to rename some of these prospects uh, before, by the uh, by time we sign them, if we can. Dexter, buddy, that gives you two entries right there. Dexter, that gives you up to seven entries now. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. So, Tani's coming up now. Let's see him. We'll sim to the next... We'll fast forward to the next round. Let's see it. Oh, Joe says to check the email too. Hold on. So, Joe went through the PayPal. There it is. Joe... Whoa! Whoa! Joe has just set a record! Whoa! We need to stop! Joe, mighty Joe Maple, has just set a record for the largest one-time cash donation in channel history. Oh my goodness, Joe. So extremely generous of you. You give and you donate your time and you donate every very often enough so much more than you have to. And we thank you so much for your contributions in every which way that comes. But most importantly, your time. But Joe, this is, this is something else. This is something else. If you didn't already know, you already have a created player guarantee. Your name will still be in the draw to get more. But it's already a guarantee that you have a created player. After that one, Joe... Mighty Joe. Let me write this down. Mighty Joe. Wow. I'm Again, I'm speech... The last couple of streams I left me speechless, ladies and gentlemen. The last couple of streams have been ridiculous for the donations. And again, as I said it, kind of just putting it out there in the universe, if I ever got to a point where I was making enough between YouTube and donations, then I'll say it. If Joe says it, I'll that I can say it, I'll say it. But I'm not going to say it publicly unless he, he says that I can. So um, if it ever gets to that point... I'm ready to drop the job and get and do this full time. We'll stream every night. But, you know, if, if nights like this keep happening, it might get to that point. Joe, what can we say? We love you. I love you. Thank you for the time that you spend here in the channel, in this community, the dedication you give to us in, all, in every which way. Again, I don't know what to say aside from thank you. And you mean so much, not just to the channel, but really to me as well. It it's a lot, means a lot to have you there. Yeah, it's gonna get to that point that my emotion chip isn't in. JD, please make, please tell me you made it to the next round, JD. No, by one home run. Wow. If you include Mark's donation of the PlayStation Five, he has the record. And if you put total donations of everyone together, that is not a record. But for a single donation, for one single one time, here's a donation donation. Yes, that's the record. So, JD did well, but he didn't make it out of round one, unfortunately. Or I should have simmed to the end to see who won. I'm sorry. JD did not make it through. Wow. Joe, you're the star of the All-Star game, buddy. You're the star of the All-Star game. Let's, let's sim through the game. 
AL defeats the NL. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, Joe. I don't know what to say. Uh, t Can I not go back and look? I have to always go on it itself? Uh, I want to see who made the All-Star game. I can look at the voting, though, still. So if we look at starting pitcher... So <laughs> it's all good, Dexter. We'll take that, too. Oh, I didn't know there was a message. Oh, because the notification doesn't tell me the message. I have to open it to read the message. Thank you, Joe. I will read that message. This is for... This, sorry, quoting Joe. This is for all your hard work, from me to you. Thank you for being everything that you are and strive to be. Let's go Expos. Let's go Canucks. Let's go Starfleet. Much love to you and Lieutenant Tesora and to the future ahead for you both. Joe. <laughs> the tears are going to come soon enough, Joe. Wow. Such a kind message. I'm s Real talk here, everyone. Real talk. The last four years have built real friendships. It's true. Like when I think of when I think of Joe, when I think of Hobbsy, when I think of Mark, and of course there's so many more. I'm not gonna start listing off the dozens of people. But when I think about those people who have been here for a long time and have dedicated so much of their time to the channel and put their money where their mouth is, literally, these are true friendships. And I am so glad that we've went on this journey together. And there's still so much more to come. Do I think Bo is a good player? Yes, I do think so. Better be yeah, <laughs> I do think so for sure. Wow. So if we look at the starting pitchers, none of our guys in the NL were on that list there. Relief pitchers, no. Shower tears. <laughs> uh, closing pitchers, no, none of them made it. Catcher, no. Kiebert was third in voting. Okay, so I don't know who made it, but Kiebert, I'm sorry, I know for the stream it would have been there. Kiebert was third in voting. So guaranteed, I don't think he made it, but Kiebert was third in voting. Uh, is that it? That's probably it, eh? So I don't think we had any All-Stars this year. Unless there was uh, Kiebert as the third catcher. on Somewhere on the platoon there. I don't think so, though. No, 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 Teodoro. No, no, no. Let me quickly nip that in the bud. Teodoro said, Joe makes me feel kind of bad because I don't have any money to donate. No, no, no. What I take, first and foremost, the number one form of currency is your time. You dedicating your time, whether it be in comments, in viewerships, in subscriptions, in whatever it is, that is the most valuable thing you can give me. The money goes a long way for purchasing games, for equipment, for supporting me as an individual if it comes to that point someday. But never, ever feel bad for not being able to give money. If you can donate financially, it is so very much appreciated. But what I appreciate, number one, is the hours and the, and the comments and the writing and all that. Never get mixed that up. Uh, so Ruiz may have made it then. If they're on that list, they made it? Really? I thought it was just uh, according to voting. Like only the number one had made it. Okay, so Kiebert made it then. Good job for Kiebert. Yes. There you go. Thank you, Joe, for re reiterating and reinforcing what I just said. I want everybody to know that. 100%. How many hun literally hundreds of hours have I streamed with this exact same level of energy when I made zero in donations, right? It's never about that. They go such a long way and they mean so much, but they do not define the your uh, your your fandom. Okay? Oh, okay, Joe, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so tears are the tears are through. We're still feeling the love, but the tears are through. Let's keep on simulating. Hey, we're 48 and 48. We had an eight game winning streak up to the deadline. And we're 48 and 48. So did I miss the day for signing draft picks? No refund. <laughs> uh, no, today's the day. Okay. So let's see. Let's try and get these guys signed on ASAP. So number one, our first guy, Forrest Lopez. Can we sign him right away? He already has 78% interest. So can we sign him right away? Because he's going to cost a lot of money. A seven, his bonus demands at 7.6. Let's try 7.45. He says yes. All right, so whew, that's out of the way. Forrest Lopez is signed. Thank goodness. Okay, that's done. Next, let's get Castillo's interest up. Let's get Donovan's interest up. And let's get, I guess, McNeil's interest up. Um, no, I'm, the donations mean a lot and they have their value. But they're not necessary. 
if you can, I'm not going to say never do it again. They're appreciated very much, and without them, we wouldn't be able to buy all these games, but... All right, so we're on an eight-game winning streak. Picking up, can we go above 500? Close. We're down by one. Hold on. So bottom of the ninth, one out. The tying run on third. The winning run on the at the plate. Let's enter this one to keep the winning streak alive. Let's see if we can make it a nine-game winning streak. Plus, we go above 500 for the first time in how long? Oh, yeah. The, don't worry. The Canadian series was lacking. <laughs> Here's Lane Thomas. What's the approach? Look on your chair for the box of chocolates. <laughs> Okay, here we are in Montreal to keep the win streak alive and to go above 500. It's Choknar. Ooh, Lane Thomas! Can it get down at least for a tag up? It's going! It's going! Oh, great catch! But that's going to be a tag up at third, and at least it's an RBI. Well done. You know Yuppie used to be the mascot? For yes, of course. I have pictures of, of Yuppie and I when he was only the mascot of the X-Force. All right, well done. Well done to Lane Thomas to bring in that run. Jose Siri now at the plate, representing the winning run. We got the tying run in. Two outs. Swings on the first pitch he sees. That goes foul. 6-6, six, six, bottom of the ninth. Cho Choknar, at the very least, Choknar got us to the 10th inning, to extras. Good old Choknar. Delivery swung on. That's going to go foul again. Quickly down 0-2, unfortunately, but at least he's fighting, not just watching them blow by. Delivery, swung on again, splitter, fouled away. Delivery, nope. taken, great take. Great take from Siri. Delivery, taken again! From two, from down 0-2, to now on a 2-2 count. 2-2 two, two count. Delivery swung on and missed. We're going to the 10th inning. All right, we're off to the 10th. Let's keep watching this one. Uh, let's finish play, yeah. Extra innings rule. So the runner's on second. Okay, it could be at Warmaster where each team is guaranteed one player. While we're watching this, I want to say... So, for example, Joe's donation... Looking at the fees here from PayPal. So, from Joe's donation, I keep 96.9% of Joe's donation. If that same donation was made on YouTube, for a large amount like that, it would be very different. I would have kept only about 70%. I would have taken off a big chunk. No, I'm just watching Doggy. I'm not playing them. I'm just, I'm just watching them. <laughs> We're just watching the sim. I'm not playing them. So when you have large amounts like that, the difference in percentages goes a long way. If you're donating three, four, five, six, whatever, I wouldn't say to sweat it too badly. But if you are donating a large amount, I would say PayPal is the best way to do it because it's not that, um, not that it changes anything. It's just that, like for me, well, what am I trying to say? I'm just trying to say that the uh, the service provider doesn't get as much of a cut. I guess I should be saying. Rutledge in now. 2-2. Two, two. Swung on. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the AB going. And it's second. The Euro's working this one. Keeps Fouls it once more. Foul ball. Eight pitches to side bat. There you go. Exactly, Joe. Well said. That one and that's play. fouled again. A foul ball. Off of 10. I think it's about 70%. And this is inside. So if it's off 10, it would be 7, I suppose. To bat next. About that. Right, for sure. It's not... I, of course, I want more of what... If you're giving it to me, I prefer that more of it goes to me. But it's more that I don't want... Oh, nice! Struck out looking. It's more that I, if you're giving it to me, I prefer that it comes to me, right? If you want to make a donation to YouTube, then, you know, make a charitable donation. But if you're even giving in the first place, it's likely because you want to be giving it towards the channel. And the way for it to get to the channel as much as possible is to do it through PayPal. But if you give it through YouTube, it's not a big deal. It's just keep in mind the larger amounts. And even then, if you give a large amount, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to be angry if you give a large... If Joe gave what he gave over uh, YouTube, I would not have been upset at all. 
it's just it's more for you. You want to give it to the channel. So I don't I don't I don't hate YouTube for it because I'm using their service. They're making it easy to donate. It's it's not the end of the world. If they were taking like 90% of the one thing. Goes down swinging. Jackson Jackson Rutledge is dealing. I do have an email. I do have an email. Uh, Dexter. That would be if Canadians could do it through e-transfer, I suppose. Canadians have e-transfer. Data782YT at gmail.com. In person works too. When you come for the wedding, you could. When you get your seat at the wedding. <laughs> Michael Conforto out now. So we saw Piguro, we saw Tamar Johnson, Data 72 Hall of Fame nominee. Now here's Michael Conforto, two for three on the day. Looking for the last out. Swung on, excuse me, swung on and missed. 0 and 2. Ooh, swung on and missed, and we're going to the bottom of the 10th. I don't have it set up for e-transfer. Like that. Like if you send an e-transfer to an email, could I not sign in with my other email from my bank and still? I'm not sure how that works. Would I have to set up? I'm not sure if I have to set it up or if I could just. Can I still claim it even if that is not the email associated to my bank? Johan Oviedo is at the plate. Oh, there you go. There you go, Dexter. Sorry, Johan Oviedo on the mound. C.J. Abrams at the plate. One of these, Joe, I'm I'm 100% convinced, I kid you not, I'm 100% convinced that'll happen someday. Four seam inside. I'm not sure who's on second. Who's on second here? Uh, Siri's, uh, of course, good. Siri, use his speed for something now. Siri's on second, a single could bring him in. That's fouled back. A single might be enough to bring him in here. Let's go, CJ. Walk it off. Whatever it takes. Swung on again. He is working. Working the at bat. Fourth pitch now. Oviedo down low. Sinker down low. One ball, two sure, you too, doggy. But Joe's the one who had just said. So I was thinking about him. Swung on. Is that going to get down? Or at least maybe tag up to third, Siri. Okay. Tag up, tag up. Let's go get to third, Siri. Use that speed. Is that enough to even come home? Is he coming home? Okay, hold on. Okay, the game didn't want to show me there, but no. They just threw to home. So Siri tags up. He goes from second to third. We're at just one out. So Manessis could bring him, bring him home with a sack fly. Could be a sack fly walk-off. Runner at third. First pitch, forcing strike. Definitely a strikeout situation. There you go. Thanks, Dexter. Yeah, the camera angle wasn't great, unfortunately. The winning run at third. Winning run at third. Livery taken in for seam. We have, to, we have to have a little conference. I'll, we'll rent out a little conference hall. He's gonna have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. If we win, we'll be over 500 for the first time in 64 games. Let's go. Come on, boys. At home in front of Les Partisans. Devant Les Partisans de Montréal. Away. Montre-moi un neuvième de suite. Ninth in a row. Neuvième de suite. Montre-moi Joey Menezes. That's going to be a four-seam outside. Winning run at third. One down. Two-two now. Siri est prête. Sur troisième. Oviedo, swing and a miss on the inside. No. All right, that brings it down to Luis Garcia, 0 for 4 on the day. Just has to bring home here a Siri at third to bring home Siri at third. First pitch, four seam outside. You got an open base, so Oviedo can work with that. Can be around a bit more outside the zone. Again, four seam outside. 2 0. Garcia batting 192 this year with runners in scoring position. Leave a like if you haven't already. Give Garcia some luck. Come on now. Delivery. Ooh, that slider's just inside. 1 and 2. 
If you're just joining us, this game is to go above 500 for the first time in 64 games and to extend our winning streak to 9 games. I didn't know that, Dexter. Basic training in Quebec. I probably know where it was. I work next. Uh, I work very close to a base. Well, I'm, I'm, there's more than one base, but I'm, I'm sure I've heard of it at the very least. How much are Habs games? We could all go to a Habs game. Maybe we're being financially concerned to be a little game. I mean, that would be a great idea, Joe. We could all come together. We could rent out a little uh, lodge here for a Laval Rockets game or something, or maybe an Impact game and get a little table. We could do. We could definitely do something. What does Bello mean? Warmaster, great question. And that'll be a walk for Garcia. Bello literally translated means beautiful, but it's used to talk. It's kind of like buddy. In uh, I'm half Italian, so it's it's used often in my circles. What's up, Bello? How are you, Bello? Bello is used as a term of endearment for for a guy to a guy. Bella would be for a girl. So Bello is used very often in in my uh, in my world. Or often enough, at least. First pitch, four seam inside. Runners on the corners, first and third. Thank you. Because I didn't make it, but I downloaded it. In St. Jean sur Richelieu? Laval Belleville, maybe. Delivery for JD. Oh, Takes that 12 6 down and away. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0 2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. JD looking to crush one. He gets it in. Okay, he brings him home. JD Martinez with the walk off RBI single. And the Expos extend their win streak to nine games. Un neuvième de suite devant les partisans de Montréal. And it's the first time that they're above 500 for the first time in 64 games. Yeah, Saint Jean sur Richelieu. I know. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Not next to where I work, but I know where that is. Huge win for the Expos. Jacqueline Rutledge gets the win, and the Pirates, despite out hitting us 10 to 9, lose six, uh, 7 to 6. Thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah, Beauty is a good one. Beauty is pretty much, pretty much. Uh, Bello works a lot with Beauty. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, replay fault. I thought it was a replay game for a second. Oof. Player of the game, Jackson Rutledge. Hey, look at you, Warmaster. Popular guy. Huge win. So we're not trying to really make the wild card, I don't think. But hey, we're 11 and a half games back of the NL East. And we look at the wild card. We're only a half game back. Extra time. How do you mean it? What do you mean by extra time? We're only a half game back here. So you know what? The playoffs at this point wouldn't be crazy. We're at an 82 win pace. We're at a 68 win pace. We're at an 82 game, uh, win pace. What a little run this has been. Uh, then an 8-4 loss to end the winning streak. Meant to, uh, it couldn't last forever. The Angels want to trade us Deshaun Knowles, Richard Wolf, and Sam Bachman for Lane Thomas. Uh, Deshaun Knowles. No thank you. <laughs> For another game series? Like, you mean another, like, a whole different, like, a series on the channel? I wouldn't be able to start one right now. Not at this exact time in my life. Soon enough. But not at this exact moment. We'll let the, yeah, we'll let the, uh, the interest keep building on these players for a little, a little while longer. 7-6 win, 4-2 loss. Keep them there. Keep the same uh, assignment. The Twins want to offer us David Festa and Craig Gonzalez for Lane Thomas. No, thank you. Uh, up 7-6, to six, and we win 7-6. to six. Very good. Let's go back here. Sign draft picks. Any interest? A little bit of an interest going very slow. Will we ever get Madden or 2K? Yes. Ever? Yes. When? Couldn't tell you. But ever, that is in my plans, my long-term plans. Yeah, I would like to do that. Uh, Tim McNeil, 80 to 93. Yeah, we definitely want to sign him. Uh, offer him a contract. Let's go up to 573. Decline for 573. Okay. Yes, I remember that, doggy. I haven't forgotten. We'll keep another week then, or another three days, I should say. The Expos logo, it's in the logo vault. Someone created it, and I downloaded it from the logo vault. One nothing loss, auto, 4-2 loss, six days left now. Let's try again for Tim McNeil. 
That's got him up to 70% interest. Still declined. Come on, Tim. Colt Donovan. Let's give him a max. 67% interest. He signs. All right, Colt Donovan. At least we got some. We got to get... Uh, we gotta get our scout, our prospect signed here. Francisco, 64%. Good, Leandro. And we'll let uh, these last guys keep uh, fermenting a little bit more. Castillo, especially. Uh, Dylan Cruz, out for a couple days, keep him active. 4 1 win, 4 0 loss. Cruz is back in. I checked out what you had sent. Uh, Doggy, when you had sent it in the Discord. Either you sent a trailer or you sent the game on Steam or something. I Yeah. No, I don't like scary games. I don't like scary games. I don't like scary movies. If you don't, I haven't said this in a while because I've, I quit when I started my full-time work. But I used to work at a movie theater. For years and years, I worked at a movie theater. And I hated anything to do with the horror movies. But that's usually where I had to k k uh, kick the people out from. So I had to go into a lot of horror movies that I did not like going into. I haven't heard much about the new Madden game yet. Just what Pat tells me in the Discord. Morales, Lara, Hers, Hassel did well... Cronin. I, I forgot all about wanting to call up, what's his name? Mick Abel. Mick Abel's been doing very well, but I forgot about calling him up because of how well everyone else has been doing. Stroke has been cold. Might want to think about trades soon. Cavalli's heating up, but Cavalli leaving could make sense for us soon enough. Relief pitching. And the relief has been really good. That could also happen if I got, uh, if I got Madden. Uh, Barnes, Rod Hart's doing well. Higashioka's Higa looking good. Joey Manassi's batting 229 with 10 home runs. Ouch. Tough. Rosario, 278. At least there's that. Garcia, though, 238. Senzel, 215. He's falling apart a little bit. Abrams, 250. Yes. You're exactly right, Hobbs. That'll be full time one day. JD's fallen apart batting average wise. 238. Do we trade him to a contender? Or are we trying to make the wild card? Siri at 195. Cruz 257. Elijah Green's looking good. Lane Thomas 217. Wow. Stone Garrett's doing very well. Up to an 82 overall now, too. That's great. So maybe we want to mix up a bit in the lineup. Joey's been struggling a lot. Maybe Stone comes up. JD goes 5. Stone goes 4. Joey comes... How's Vavra? 224. Kiebert goes 2nd. Then batting 3rd. Could be... I guess Garcia stays... Can't take them both out. So keep, yeah, I'll keep Kiebert there. JD there. Yeah, the bottom, bottom lineup is tough. But actually, Cruz is back in now. Cruz is back in. So I don't want, so if we want the wild card pushings, we're not going to trade away our guys. Siri, 195. You're killing me, Siri. Okay. Vavra's going to come out against righties. And we'll try to put him in against lefties, maybe? I mean, he's better against righties. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, boy. JD's going to come out in the outfield. JD's going DH guaranteed. That's one change we're going to make if Siri stays. Siri's going to stay in against righties. Um, Garrett's in there for sure. Series out against lefties. Cruz is going to come in against lefties. Uh, Rosario, 278. Higoshioka. Really good against lefties, but Kiebert's our guy. So Senzel's been struggling, so we get someone else to lead off. Stone's going to lead off against lefties now. We'll put Cruz... Second... Kiebert's going 6. Abrams is going 5. Senzel's going 7. Kiebert's going to go 8 here to try to distribute a little bit. And Manessis, who should be good against lefties, will go 6. Okay, so there's a little mix-up in the lineup for us. But I want Dylan Cruz to play. 
Lopez? Oh, the rookie? No, they can't play until next season. Not eligible till next season. Where does Cruz come into the lineup? Garcia at third base hasn't been good. I know he looks ready, but he can't. Least favorite chore? Can you give me some options? Depends on the house, I guess. Garcia is killing me a little bit here. Come on, Garcia. Right, but JD is DHing right now, but Kiebert, yeah, he could DH long term. Whoa, well, how about Joey comes out, Stone goes first, and Dylan goes outfield? I don't mind mopping. I did a lot of mopping back in the day. So Stone's going to play first base. All right, there we go. Laundry, not bad. I like sweeping. I like, I'm a big sweeping fan. I like vacuuming. Okay, back to it. 4 1 loss. Dylan Cruz injured again. We just had him injured. 2 1 win. Uh, last couple days of signed draft. Tim McNeil, I'll offer him a max contract again. Uh, now he's signed on. Good. Tim McNeil's on board. Santos, max offer. He's on board. Good. It's just Castillo. Castillo, I'm giving you max um, attention now. Garbage, I like. No problem. Laundry. Okay, how about folding and putting away laundry, I'll say. Folding and putting away laundry. Now Slim hasn't been here in a little bit. Or he could be watching quietly. Broken nail for, for him. Astros want to offer us Colin Barber for Joey Manessis. Uh, no thank you. Come on now. 4-2 win. Today is the trade deadline. A big day. So I don't think we're going to be buyers. But we could try and think about making some changes. In the standings, we are five and a half games back of the wild card now. Which isn't great. We're five and a half games back. I don't think we're going to make it, honestly. But I don't want to say that we're giving up. We're not. But if I had to guess, I don't think we're going to make it. Uh, trades. So, sorry, maybe we should look at... Um, no, maybe we could look at trades. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's true. Not always quietly. So we could think about trading. We look at expiring contracts. Jose Siri... He'll be in arbitration. He's batting 200. I don't know. Jose Siri's not doing it for me right now, but I wouldn't say it's a rush. JD will keep. Uh, Osega will keep. Hunter Harvey will keep. Mick Abel. Joey Manessis could be a guy. He's in... No, he's in arbitration. Ooh, I didn't know that. He's in arbitration. But he's been struggling. Joey Manessis has been struggling. We have no one to fill in at first base right now. But Stone Garrett could fill the hole. So Stone Garrett could play first. Senzel, tough year. Rosario, we signed him for three years. I don't want to trade him yet. Ah, I see, of course, of course. Matt Barnes, he's been okay, even though he's not closing. He's been okay. Rutledge, Waldron's been good. Rutledge, he's renewable next year. Oof. Luis Garcia now is someone who's tempting me to be traded, but he's still only 24 with B potential. I don't think we need to trade for a first baseman just yet. I don't know, and last, Manassi's in Siri for a first baseman? Even Cavalli could be tossed in. Cavalli could be someone who we trade. So what if we trade Cavalli and Siri? Cavalli and Siri... He only signed on for one more year anyways. Cavalli and Siri. For who? A first baseman? Unless we sign one in free agency. But for right now, yeah, it's true. We could use a first baseman. Is there any team that has a couple first basemen out there? Just thinking first about that. Who's it? Kyle Manzardo. Kyle Manzardo. 72 overall, but 24 years old. Could that be a potential reclamation project? We could get Josh Naylor, but it wouldn't make sense for Cleveland to trade him, I don't think. Maybe we could look at the uh, trade blocks first, actually. Uh, where are the trade blocks? View all trade blocks. Any first baseman out there? No, it goes by team. Any first baseman out there? Skubal, Stott, Kirk, Castellanos. No first baseman, eh? Uh, the first one is Rowdy Tellez. No, it doesn't really work. Anyone first base eligible? Nick Castellanos could play first. He's 33, signed on for... 
one more year at 20 million, batting 286 with Philadelphia. Very good against lefties. Nick Castellanos, I don't know if he'd want to come here, but I don't think it really has much, he doesn't have as much say. So Castellanos could play first. Edmundo Sosa could play first, also in Philadelphia. Not great numbers, though. That's about it. So how do the Phillies look right now in the standings? The Phillies... The Phillies are number one in the division. Nah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to do that. So let's look at player search instead. Favorite baseball team? I'd say the Nationals, probably, as an Expos fan. What city would I like to visit in America? I've been to New York, I've been to Chicago, where would I like to visit? I've been to Miami. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe what, something in California, mix it up. Maybe something in Hawaii. <laughs> Alright, first base, first base. Let's look for a first baseman, who's at least, let's say, at least uh, 78 overall, at least, with contact... And the 70s, at least for both. Let's check it out. So Vlad Guerrero Jr. is number one. Vinny Pasquantino. Uh, Big Vin. Big Vin batting 248. Okay. Freddie Freeman. Crazy contract. Not going to pay for that. Oh, because that concert. You're telling me about that. Yandy Diaz batting 327. But they wouldn't want to take back... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Siri. Naylor, Low, Bryce Harper, now a primary first baseman. Now these players are too good. Let me bring the contact down a little. Oops. Brings a few more options. Exactly, Leafs King. Josh Naylor's there, but I'm not sure if it'll make much sense for the, uh, for the Guardians. How are they doing right now? It'll this will come it'll come down to how they are in the standings. The Guardians are 45 and 64. Would they want to trade Naylor? That could be yet speaking to me a bit more now. Plus, plus they do have the prospect coming up in the system. They got to make room for him. So Josh Naylor could make sense for Joey Manessis, who's kind of like a toss in, but mainly for Jose Siri for the outfield. And we could even take value back, but I wouldn't. It would be Josh Naylor for Jose Siri and Joey Manessis. Yeah, but Freeman's old. He's regressing. And he has three more years, I think, at $27 million. So, I prefer not to. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? Do we bring in a Canadian and Josh Naylor? Batting 292 this year. Great for the contact. Great for the clutch. Where is he from in Canada? Let me look this up. What do we think? Are we getting a green light on this one? Josh Naylor. Uh, where is he from? Born in... Doesn't say. Mississauga. There you go. I feel like they prefer to, a prospect to Manessis if we're keeping it a bit realistic. True. Siri is kind of like that guy because he still has potential. He has B potential and he's 29. Okay, I don't, I don't want to... I shouldn't cheese it too much. You're right. So they get back Messi's as a as a um, as a placeholder for Manzardo, who's going to come up. But then I could throw in Sandlin again. They'll be potential. I don't know if they want to want to move him. If I throw in Sandlin, I have to throw in a good prospect, like someone we just drafted. I'd prefer not to. Andre Lara. Someone, Ernesto Valdez. If I take Sandlin as well, nah, I don't think we can do it right now. We'll keep him in mind. Keep the Submariner in mind, but it just adds a bit too much value. I don't want to add a really good prospect to it. Okay, so if I give you a decent prospect, maybe Lyle. He's hot right now, batting 269. He's 22 with C potential. Maybe Lyle. Or maybe De La Rosa. We have a lot of outfield prospects. Maybe this is where we move one of our outfield prospects. We could move De La Rosa. 22C64 or 23B64. They probably want the B has more value. 
So Jeremy De La Rosa would probably be here. Right. So what if, okay, we could add, let's add De La Rosa so we feel better about the deal with realism. But now we'll take back a little bit of value too. Not Sandlin. I won't take back a roster player. Maybe just someone for depth. At, uh, maybe at first base. Well, we're, we're bringing in a couple of first basemen in the prospects. Any third, maybe a third base prospect. 25B, Tyler Freeman. 25B, I don't know if he'll grow. 22D might make more sense. Lower potential, but three years younger. Would he ever grow, though? That's the question. Maybe Watson? Wow, I want to. Why can't I trade for him? Just because he's injured. Can the second play shortstop? Yeah. Derek Holcomb. 263 in AAA right now. Good contact. All right, this is what we're going to do. Joey Manessis, Jose Siri, and Jeremy De La Rosa to the Guardians for Josh Naylor and Derek Holcomb. Thank you, Cleveland. Let's pull the trigger. Thank you very much. Big deal. Joey Manessis, thank you for your time here in Washington slash Montreal. And Jeremy De La Rosa, good luck in the Guardian system. Siri wasn't working out either, so good luck to you. And now we'll get uh, Bo Naylor, Josh Naylor, Josh Naylor in our lineup to play first base. That's big. Josh Naylor, hopefully a long-term piece for us as well. So Stone Garrett can go in the outfield. Josh Naylor is going to come bat... Uh, he's going to bat fifth, let's say. Uh, and JD can go here, probably. No, Senzel can't go center field. Well, he could. Oh, it's because Cruz is injured. That's why. Okay, so Cruz will come back soon. Then here, Josh Naylor... Better against righties, but we'll keep him here at the moment. And who's missing here? Oh, Cruz. So Vavra can slot in for the moment. Vavra will swap with Stone. And he'll play outfield. He can do that for a game. Whatever, we'll fix it once Cruz comes back into the lineup. Alright, so there's the big news, the big trade. There's the big move, I should say, of the deadline, ladies and gentlemen. There is the move. Alright, auto fix lineups in double A. Place him on the bench. Dreadline sign draft So we win 6-4. to four, Three game winning streak. We're back to 500. 55 and 55. And we can look at contract extensions right away on Josh Naylor. Damn. I keep saying Baylor, Naylor, Bo. So Josh Naylor, he's going to be free agent eligible. So he needs a contract. We'll call him a star. No problem. I'd probably look at giving him five years. Five years sounds good to me. Let's see if we can bring it down to 62. Five years at 62 million, he's on board. Great, Josh Naylor, sign and extend five more years. Welcome aboard, another Canadian joining us, and that'll be a five-year deal for him. Lane Thomas, he's free agent eligible this year? Yes. What does he want? He wants some term now. Yeah, we, can, we should give him term. We should give him term at this point. Five years, five million? He wants more than that, eh? Let's wait for the offseason on Lane Thomas. J.D. Martinez. I'm not sure about keeping him at all, actually. Loisiga, he's been great. Can we go... I, I'd say let's go two years. Two years. He's earned it. Four and a half per year. He's making three, but he's earned... Look at the numbers this year. Let's even go three years. Three years, but a little cheaper. Three years at 4.3. Nice. Uh, and we'll probably stop on everybody else. That's it. Yeah, we'll save the rest. Even Cade Cavalli, we're thinking about, oh, we never traded Cade Cavalli, eh? And now it's too late? It's too late. So Cade Cavalli, we can always trade him later on. We'll let him play out the year in AAA then. Okay, so here's the big moment. Let me uh, get Castillo signed on. Then we can finally see what their final chance here. Is it? Ah, so Castillo might not sign. This is our last chance. We'll give him the max we can give him, 2.02 million. But he wants 2.4. He's not happy about that, so we'll try, but... Oh, wow! Okay, Castillo signs! Thank you, Miguel! I'm glad you realized your, uh, what's good for you. Wow, great news. Great news. Okay, so now we can finally see... Place him on the bench. We can get Cruz in the lineup, and we can finally see what our draft picks actually were all this time later. So Dylan Cruz is going to come in for... Uh... Yeah, Thomas, take a break, Thomas. No, no, actually, it's Senzel who comes out against righties. Cruz comes in. All the hot guys are on the bench. Doesn't make sense. Everyone who's swinging a hot bat's on the bench. 
So Rosario, you come in for uh, Vavra then. I will, yeah, no problem, uh, Jack. Or even Garcia. Come in for Garcia, Rosario. Come in for Garcia. And then against lefties, Cruz comes in for Vavra. Or does Vavra stay against lefties? No, Vavra's in against righties. Vavra's out against lefties. Cruz will go in there. There we go. Hey, you heard me, doggy. <laughs> uh, July. Here you go, uh, Jack. Here you are. Okay. So here's the moment of truth. Let me take a little sip of water. Let me get the throat ready. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Did we hit on these picks? View draft picks. So so. Whoa! But Forrest, hold on a second. Whoa! Forrest Lopez is a bust. No! Forrest Lopez is a bust. Shouted from the rooftops. He's a bust. Oh no! The fifth overall pick has C potential? That's ridiculous. We can still try and turn him into something. He could always become something. It's not that the C, the C can come, become a B and the B be, can become A. We'll look at Lucas Teodoro. We'll look at Lucas and see if it was the better pick. Forrest Lopez, no. We'll see what happens. Miguel Castillo, also C potential. Our top two picks with C potential. Santos, B potential, at least. McNeil, B potential. Francisco, C potential. Donovan, B potential. Oh, no. So Santos and McNeil in the high 80s is good. Same for Donovan at 87. So we have three players in the high 80s. Three in the high 80s, three in the high 70s. Wow. I've never seen a bust like that in terms of the scouts said one thing and he was another. Wow. We had him 70% scouted, but we've learned our lesson. That's not enough. Okay, so we're thinking... But, oh, actually, even, even Bannister was a high guy who went 75 Malanco, a lot of these top picks were not that good. Portillo, 74. Lenny, there's Lenny. 93 potential Lenny. I might have to do anything to trade for this guy. Next season, let's make him our top target if we have to. Oh my goodness. Morton, 95. Tapia, 83. Matthew Lucas, there he is. 91. Matthew Lucas. Oh boy. Yeah, we blew that one. Bannister. He was only 78. What? So, at least we weren't alone. There are a lot of first-round picks who were busts. Kilgore, 77, even. He was another first-round pick. Low, 77. Valdez, 79. Shed, okay, was 89. We wanted him. Uh, Ridley. Whoa! Brad Ridley, 99 potential. Possibly the pick of the draft. Whoa. Sheesh. Quinlan went right after as well at number six. He had 88 potential. Shroth had 80. We were thinking about Shroth. He went just a few picks after. Only 84. So really not a strong top end of the draft. Bo Rush was a first round pick. 85. Yeah, this was a really weak class for the top, top guys. Seth Silva. We were going to think about him. He had like 90-some potential. 75. Wow. So you know what? All things considered, I'm glad we got some decent players. But we definitely missed out, unfortunately. All Look at this. All in all, to have three high 80 players, that's good. Oh, Dubois. Dubois, I'm sure he's good. It's just I don't like using a first pick on uh, on a closer usually. Dubois, here. He was 90 potential. But we have Rod Hart. I'm, I'm content. Wow. So there you have it. First overall was to the A's, right? The A's. Was it Benitez? Was that him? First overall, 79? Ah, that's crazy. Wow. Okay, so we're in the final stretch now, ladies and gentlemen. 
We're in the final stretch. Last two months, we're 56 and 56. 6 3 win, 5 4 win, 2 0 win. We're looking okay. We're looking okay. Uh, very high. We're up by one. Can Loisiga close it out? I don't know if he did. Hunter Harvey, keep him active. We do. 5 4 win. 4 uh, 1 win. Kate Cavalli out one to two months. Bye bye. Yeah, Lenny was the guy. We knew it. We had six straight wins there, and we lose six to one. Uh, we're up one nothing. Ferguson's trying to close it out, and he does. There you go. Yeah, rough class. Four three win, seven four loss. Hunter Harvey, get him back in. Setting up. Or should Ferguson be the closer? I don't know. Four blown saves for Caleb Ferguson, despite those really good numbers. That's crazy. Hunter Harvey will stay as the closer. Thirty two saves on the year. Uh, yeah, our relief has been good, though. Relief pitching's good. Relin's gonna come out for Waldron. The rotation's been pretty good as well. Pretty, uh, pretty, uh, consistent, I could say. Okay. Uh, one to two months for Lyle. 60 day. 4-2 loss. 5-3 three, three loss. 6-4 loss. Then we, yeah, then here comes a big stretch of losses, and we're back to 500. Hunter Harvey trying to close it out, and he does. Well done. 2 1 win, 3 1 loss. We're back to 500. 63 and 63. Uh, 63 and 63, and we're four and a half games back of the wild card. Come on, big. Whenever we face the, the Braves, it'll be big. 7 2 loss, 6 5 win, 3 1 win. Uh, down by one, Ruiz. Can he get us back into it? We lose 9 to 8. We dig it back into it, but we lost. Auto, auto, auto. Two nothing loss. Cavalli, keep them there. Two nothing loss. Uh, we lose three to two. Sixty five and sixty seven, and we're losing a few too many. We're back to five hundred. No. Allison, keep on the sixty day. Six four loss. Ten three loss. Uh, six five loss. I don't think we're gonna make it, ladies and gentlemen. Seven five loss. Sixty seven and seventy two. We're just not able to be consistent enough. Five games back, such a weak NL wildcard race, but I don't think we're going to make it at this rate. So now, the call-ups. Time for the call-ups. Uh, trying to Perfect, I'll do it, Warmaster, let me know. So from AAA, Mick Abel's getting the call. Mick Abel's getting the call up to the MLB. Uh, Rod Hart, not yet. James Wood is getting the call. James Wood, I'm the 40 man... James Wood's getting the call. And Emmanuel Rodriguez is getting the call back. Or should it be Elijah Green? Uh, no, it's going to be Emmanuel Rodriguez. Uh, back to the MLB. There we go. And Robert Hassel III can move up to AAA. And then in single A, let's move up a couple players. Ernesto Valdez, why not? Double A... And uh, done to double A. Okay. So we call up a few players. I don't want to have too many. I think we have to have 28 though, am I right? Yeah, you have to have 28. So we have to call up two more. Uh, I don't want to call up Rod Hart though right now. I'm happy with where he is. Any other relief pitcher we can call up? Relief pitcher. Powell. Bah. Thompson. Okay, Mason Thompson can come up. And Bubba Chandler from Double A. Add him to the 40 man and call him all the way up from Double A. Bubba Chandler. Okay. Rotation is good. Waldron's going to move out of the rotation. I'm going to give a rotation spot to Mick Abel. Mick Abel's going to get a rotation spot to the end of the year. Bubba in mid. And there you go. Line up Rodriguez and. Uh, Wood both called up. Let's give Wood some time here as well. Thomas batting 219 on the year. Crazy. Who's batting 222 I just saw? JD. Okay, JD, take a rest now, buddy. JD's going to platoon now, I think, for the rest of the year. JD, take a rest, buddy. Or at least against... Um, sorry. JD's going to platoon against... He's only going to play against lefties. Against righties, James Wood is coming in. James Wood's going to come in, and is he going to play in the outfield? Naylor's there. There. 
Okay. Stone Garrett's been incredible. Up to 83 overall. Love it. Rosario's been cold. Let's put, let's go like this. Strong top of the order. Let's do that. Against the lefties, JD can stay. Wood will platoon. Vavra platoons. Rodriguez. Okay. Oof. Let's keep going now. Final stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. 2-1 win. Very high importance. We're down by one. Dylan Cruz at the plate. Okay, let's go in for this one. We're getting... It's a long episode, but the season can be long. We're getting close to wrapping it up now. Next it's up in the hockey Dylan games, Cruz. by the way. Trying to deliver as the hero. Hey, why can't they team select? I, I clicked it too late, right? By half a fraction of a second. What's up here? Flavskovsky scored his 20th goal, and the Red Wings, uh, the Canadians are back up 4-3. to three. Lane Hudson got an assist. Love it. So the Canadians are up. The Red Wings are down by one here. I'm going to put the game on, actually. Blue Jackets are up. Hurricane, sorry, Capitals and Flyers tied at one. The Penguins have a chance here. The Penguins have a chance. Uh, Panthers up 4-2. to two. That's good. For my fantasy, I should say. Where does that put me in the Dynasty League? In the Dynasty... Where does that put me in the standings? I'm still... I'm up by two points over Glasgow against Golden. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to pull up the game here because I want to watch the end of the Canadians game as this goes. But as it opens, we can get this first pitch. Unfortunately, I can't team select, so I need to swing. I feel bad swinging on it, but I'm going to swing on it. If it's in the strike zone. Yeah. Okay. I feel bad. Like, I'm cheesing it. But there's the out. All right, and that was it. And that was oh, that was the game. Oh, what a why couldn't it let me change select sides? Oh, what a joke! It was all for nothing. <sighs> okay, RDS. Okay, LNH. Red Wings de Detroit contre le Canadien de Montréal. Oh, it's a new. It's coming for le Dodge Jeep, or whatever. It's uh, Ram Cherokee, whatever these uh, commercials are. Okay, yeah. One nothing loss. Two one win. Auto five two loss. Man, everyone's getting injured. Even uh, Mick Abel got injured already. Three two loss in his debut, in his MLB debut. Mick Abel only saw one batter. Oh my goodness, this poor guy. Okay, six one loss. Okay, now he's back. Okay. <laughs> Abel, welcome. There. Uh, ten three win, great. We won't see the Braves for the rest of the year, right? Eh? No. Five four loss, seven two loss, five one loss, eleven five win. We're seventy one and seventy nine. Standings, eight games back. I don't think we're gonna make it, ladies and gentlemen. But this was the type of season I wanted to see where we were building. Eight two win, four three win, six three win, just like that. There we go. Just like that, now we're six and a half games back. No, you can't, dog. You can't. Uh, hold on. We're up four to three. Hunter Harvey looking to close it out. And we lose five to four. Great. Blows it. Nunez out for the year. Seven, six loss. Oh, we are facing the Braves. Seven, six loss. Ten, seven win. Let's go see this last one. Let's quick manage this one. Gore versus Strider. Here we go. Kane's game's back. Let's quick manage this one at Truist Park. Mackenzie Gore on the mound. Naylor's great, but he's tied, but he's also like our best player, so we're going to keep him in. We're going to keep him all in. Here we go. First inning, second inning, close. Third inning, fourth inning, one run for the Braves. Sixth inning, all right. Mackenzie Gore, I'll give you another inning, and you blew it. We got one. Gore's out. Let's bring in, let's bring in... Waldron. Waldron, he's been a trooper. Nice. Solo home run. Fly out, ground out, single. You're done. Let's bring in Bubba Chandler. Bubba, fly out. James Wood Three. strikes out. Walk for Vavra, double play. Three. Single, strikeout, error, strikeout, line out. Nice. Ninth inning, down by four. CJ grounds out. Kiebert, let's bring in... Uh... Rodriguez is coming in. Rodriguez strikes out. And let's bring in, finally, Garcia, who flies out. There we go. And we lose nine innings strong from Spencer Strider. Couldn't do that in my fantasy, though. OK. 
Okay, my only playoffs are beginning. 7-1 loss, 4-1 loss. Yeah, okay, at this point, let's just lose as many as we can. Stone Garrett out for a few days. We'll keep him active. 4-2 win. Same to the end of this one. Lose 3-2. Final game of the season. We're 76-85. and 85. Florida outshot the Leafs. Whoa! Florida outshot Toronto 31-4 to in the second period. Yeah, they're, they're checked out. They're just looking for that uh, goal record now. Uh, okay, no problem. The computer did some stuff there. Final game of the season, ladies and gentlemen. We're pretty much trying to tank it, I think. <laughs> we just want to get one last L, but let's make it an entertaining one. Yeah, we were 63-63. and 63, So I'll take it. Oops, sorry. Backed out. Let's go, Stad Olympic. There we go. Olympic Stadium. Mackenzie Gore on the mound to finish off the year. Uh, Keyboard's going to come out for Higashioka. He's been a trooper. Thomas has been terrible. He's coming out for James Wood. Uh, Raz JD's going to come out from DHing for... Val... No, Rodriguez. Rodriguez is going to get a chance there. All right, let's play ball. It is the final game of year number two. Ladies and gentlemen, first inning. I'll say first period. First inning, stolen base, walk, strikeout, fielder's choice. Great. All right, Rosario singles, double play, ground out. Great. All right, let's start flying through it. Third inning, fourth inning, two, four runs from us. There we go. Four runs. Garcia hits a home run. Huh. Naylor walks. Garcia home run. Rodriguez single. Abrams strikes out. Cruz grounds out. Then Senzel hits a home run and Cruz scores. And Higashioka strikes out. Go in at the seventh? Nah, at this point, if there was anything to fight for, but it's it's just to try and lose pretty much at this point. But we're winning. Hold on. Single, single, single. Fly out, strike out, ground out. All right, we gave up a run. Wood flies out. Rosario pops up. Naylor grounds out. Strike out, single, single. Okay, we'll pull Gore now. Gore comes out for Barnes. Good old Matty Barnes. Goalie pulled for the Red Wings right now. Barnes strikeout. Bader fly out. Garcia. Here we go. Oh, you want to see it? I'll go in for the ninth, Joe. Fly out. Three innings would be a bit long. Error gets CJ on base and Cruz for his choice. Fly out. Strikeout. Fly out. Senzel. Strikeout. Higashioka will single for Wood to single. Runners in the corners for Rosario. Sack fly brings him in. And Josh Naylor will single for Garcia, who grounds out. All right, eighth inning now. Two good innings from Matt Barnes. That's good. Let's go, uh, let's go Thompson. Mason Thompson. Ground out, fly out, pop up. That's good. Uh, Red Wings offensive zone draw. It's a high pressure. Goes from the point. That's going to go just wide. I should almost give play-by-play uh, -by -play here. There you go. That's where negotiation works, right? Rodriguez will single, fly out, Cruz, Fielder's Choice, Senzel strikes out. All right, ninth inning to close it out. We're going to bring in the man who's done it so many times this season. I'm just looking at the Red Wings game on the side as well here. Uh, we're going to bring in Hunter Harvey. Should we bring in Caleb Ferguson? Ferguson had the better numbers this year. Let's get, Harvey's been the guy. We're going to go Hunter Harvey. We're going to enter the game. Patty Kane, just wide. Let me put the volume a little from RDS. Welcome in, John Chambi, Chris. Let me change sides before the game doesn't let me. Singleton. There we go. Late stages. All right, three outs away from the season being over. And the point that stopped and Primo or whoever that is will hang on. Delivery. Four seam in for a strike. Hunter Harvey, good season this year. We thought he might become the the, the closer, and that's exactly what he became. Swung on, fouled. Fifty-three point three seconds to go in Detroit. Oh, in Montreal for the Detroit Red Wings. That's inside, four seam way inside, up high. There's that beautiful Stade Olympic here in Montreal. It's primo in nets. And a pinch. Delivery. Just outside, twelve six outside. Red Wings taking a timeout now. Swung on again. Fouled once Knocks more. One away and we'll do it again. The Penguins need the Canadians to win this game. If the Red Wings win, the Penguins are done, I believe. The pitch. 
Foul ball Popped another up. Two -two Making Harvey work over here. 53.3 seconds to go. Stevie Y on his feet with those glasses. Love it. Oh, High ball. full count. And that's going to be in for a strike as he goes down looking. There is strike number one. Strike out, excuse me. Strike out number one. Look at that stadium. Not a bad season overall. We did what we wanted, developed some young guys, and got more pieces for the team. You're exactly right, Teodoro. You are exactly right. Larkin versus Evans on the draw here. In for a strike. Four seam down low. Baines win the draw. Savard. Swung around the side. That'll just get out. No, it stays in. Wow, just in the blue line. And Hunter Harvey hits triple digits on the gun. 100 mile per hour fastball. And that's in for a strike. Empty net is missed. That'll be icing for the Canadians. Four seam is swung on. 0 and 2 still. Hunter Harvey didn't know he could hit 100. What a guy. Hunter, he's got the juice. That'll be put into play. And even Hunter... Whoa, Hunter Harvey's going for the rundown. As Stone Garrett didn't want to just move to first. Or actually, neither. And that'll be out number two. Last out of the season. We'll end off with a dub, it looks like. Not too shabby. And it, I'm glad that we lost a bit down the stretch, though. So we'll still get a good, like, top 15 pick or something, I would hope. Just That's nice. just sliders Harvey, just up high. Years old now. Bader so three for eighteen against Harvey this season. Back in 2013. Thirty-six point seven seconds to go in Montreal. That just hundred mile per hour now forcing just outside. Detroit playing our goalie again. Puck into the Montreal territory. Harvey delivery. Swung on, and will that be the final out? And yes, it looks like it will be. Ladies and gentlemen, the season comes to an end with a win at home. Devant les Partisans in front of the home fans. The Expos win the last game of the season. Was that an improvement on last year? I believe it was, right? Oh, yeah, it was, but I forget by how much. Bonsoir, elle est partie. Bonsoir, les Partisans. Merci beaucoup pour être ici cette année. On se voit en 2026. We'll see you in 2026. Mackenzie Gore, player of the game, gets the win. He wasn't that great, but player of the game for him. Garcia, one for four with a home run. Senzel, one for four with a home run. Now we were 66 and 96. So this year we end, what was it, 77 and 85. 11 more wins. We'll take it. What a year. Uh, 7.7 seconds left to go for the Canadians. Let's just end up this one. Uh, draw the Canadian zone. One back by the Red Wings. From the point, I scores! The Red Wings score! With 3.3 seconds to go! And did that just eliminate the Penguins? David Perron, dans la belle province! Did that just eliminate the Penguins? I thought it was Cider, it was Perron. Wow, my brother is <laughs> devastated. So did that eliminate the Penguins right there? The Habs broke his heart again. Unless there's going to be some sort of challenge here. Nope. Wow. Yeah, where you been, doggy? Wow. The Penguins are, are they still alive? Hold on, let me see in the standings now. Sorry to, to sidetrack here a little bit. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Sorry for the sidetracking. So Detroit gets a point that brings them to 90. 
if the Penguins win and they get to 90 and the Red Wings lose... Sorry. If the, if the Red Wings lose in overtime and they end with 90 points, the Penguins win their last game, they get to 90 points. Would they leapfrog the Red Wings by regulation wins or something? What about the Capitals, though? Capitals are also going to overtime. And the Capitals... Yeah, the Capitals and Red Wings both going overtime almost. Well, not officially. The, the Capitals aren't, but it's close. Wow. This has been a crazy wild card rush. The Pens would still be in right now. Okay. Kane's got to win in overtime here. Kane, the Capitals just scored? Hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did the Capitals just score? My NHL app says 1-1. One, one. You're telling me 2-1? Yeah, go for it, doggy. My, NA, my NHL app says 1-1. One, one. Oh, now it says 2-1. There you go. It's over. It's over for the Penguins then. Oshi. It's over. If the Capitals win, it's it's done. Empty net? Oh, the empty, it's not empty net. Gold. Now it's the empty net, though. Wow. Okay, so sorry for the sidetrack there. Wow. Okay, so we end the season 77 and 85, ladies and gentlemen. It was a great building type season. That, the exact type of year that we wanted to see. Not good enough to make the postseason, but we made a valiant effort. Now we'll see Reds versus Diamondbacks to face the Phillies. Dodgers versus Braves to face the Cubs in the NL. In the AL, Houston versus Toronto to face Texas. Minnesota versus Tampa Bay to face Baltimore. Let's check out the league. Uh, so standings in the end. We ended seven games back of the wild card. Not horrible. The Flyers pulled the goalie in regulation. Wait, what? S someone explain to me what happened, please. The Flyers were tied 1-1. And because they couldn't afford... I guess they couldn't afford the Capitals getting a point. They pulled their goalie to say we need the regulation win. So basically they, they condemned the Penguins. Oh, they needed the regulation win. Wow. So not only did they, did they fall apart, they also brought the Penguins down with them. And the Red Wings. So the Flyers essentially eliminated three teams including themselves with that decision wow and it looks like the red wings might make it then that's crazy that is crazy okay season recap now let's get through it here i'll check discord at the end so batting average just want to see quick things anyone who makes the top here any other, anyone who makes the top here uh so batting average no hits hits main Expos, Josh Naylor, okay in the end, technically, with us. Anybody else? CJ Abrams, 43rd at 146. Okay. At bats, doubles, triples. Lane Thomas, 4th in triples at 9 on the year. Okay. Uh, home runs. Otani had 50 home runs. Corey Seager had 53 home runs. What? Wow. 53 home runs for Corey Seager. Aaron Judge of 51. Sorry. Um, anyone up here? No. I, I, JD had 29. No, he messaged me saying goodnight. So, I won't check. When we used to be, when we were growing up together, it used to be like, don't go close. <laughs> oh, trip. That's it. Good call. Kane's one of the power play here. All right. RBI, nothing. Runs, nothing. Stolen bases. CJ Abrams, 35 stolen bases. Less than last year, but still third in the NL. Nice. Uh, anybody else? I'm looking. I'm not, I'm not really looking at any of the stats here. Matt Waldron, only four losses. Okay, that's good for pitching 185 innings. He pitched a lot. Matt Waldron, Mister Knuckleball. Uh, Hunter Harvey, 39 saves. What a beast! Eighth in saves in the NL. ERA Logan Webb, Mackenzie Gore, fourth least home runs allowed at 17. Uh, strike, 230 strikeouts from Otani. Wow. Complete games, innings pitch. Innings pitch, Josiah Gray pitched 207 and two-thirds. Uh, Matt Waldron, only 45 walks allowed, eighth least. 
Whip, Waldron, 8th and 1.13. Nice. Pitching war. We'll see later. Batting war. Nobody. Batting average. Okay. Awards. Awards. NL MVP, Otani. Uh, Snell. Do we have any runner-ups in the awards or anything like that? Let's just fly through these. Looking for the Expos logo. Expos logo. None. No winners, no runners-up, and no second runners-up either. Okay. Tactics is in shambles with the Caps Flyers game. <laughs> That's crazy. So then the Caps, sorry, I, I said the Red Wings would make it. No, it would be the Capitals making it. So the Red Wings would be finished then because of that. So the Flyers eliminated themselves and the Penguins and the Red Wings with that move. That's crazy. Just accept that you're poverty, Philadelphia. Let the loss happen. One timer. Ooh, Matheson almost had it. Okay, where else are we looking? I think that's about it, right? That's about it. Just look at our own stats now. Our own stats. Uh, so uh, CJ Abrams, 75 runs. Looking good there. 165 hits from Josh Naylor. 146 from Abrams. Keeper Ruiz, 128 hits. Pretty solid. JD, Dylan Cruz, 120 hits. Good rookie season from Dylan Cruz. It was up to a 77 now. That's great to see. Stone Garrett up to an 83. He had a great year as well. Matt Murray, the goalie. Maybe not, I don't know if he's underrated, just that he's not, the injuries have, uh, yeah, the, he's, the injuries have hurt his stock, really. Yeah, Waldron did have a good year. Obi wants that cup. Uh, sorry, home runs, 29 from JD, 20 from uh, Naylor, 18. This can't, this can't be accurate. My, my, I'm, I'm, my screen is telling me that there's only one person watching, but there's at least like three people even commenting, so it can't be. It's so weird. Anyways. Stone Garrett, 18 home runs. It wasn't a big power year. We got to look at the power in free agency, probably. We want to get more power next season. 77 RBI from JD. Stolen bases, aside from CJ's, 35. Lane, 13. Naylor, 10. Cruz, 8. Garcia, 8. Batting average. Garrett, 313. Crazy. Higashioka was a good backup catcher at 298. Naylor, 297. Uh, on base percentage, 377 from Stone Garrett. We're thinking about trading him at one point. But he's been a great uh, little. Um, ooh, he's a great little uh, run this past season in a bit. Uh, slugging percentage five fifty two from Garrett as well. OPS nine twenty nine from Garrett. And looking at WAR, most valuable batters three point two for Josh Naylor and Stone Garrett. Negative one point one for Lane Thomas. Do we think about trading Lane Thomas? Maybe he's going to be a free agent. Do we sign and trade? Maybe even. I don't know. Lane Thomas was not impressed with him this season. Negative 0.8 from JD. He'll be gone anyways. Abrams, negative 0.5. After last year, he was positive 1. This year was negative 0.5. Rosario, negative 0.1. Oops, what am I looking at? Sort. But yeah, some players... Not a lot of players in the positives, really, unfortunately. Okay, the pitchers now. Matt Waldron had 15 wins. What?! He was at the bottom of the rotation. 15 wins from Waldron. Uh, hold on, let me see. 15 starts. 12 out of 15 were quality starts. Wow. Gray, 12 and 13. Don't look at the win-loss. Look more at just the uh, the numbers. Soroka, 8 and 16. His numbers went down a little bit towards the end. So of the starting pitchers, and Abel, he didn't see much. Only 17 innings. That's odd, but it's okay. Only 17 innings. Next year, he'll be in the rotation. Our rotation next year will be... Gray, Bueller, Gore, Abel, and one. the last spot will go to, I said Gray, Bueller, Gore, Abel. The last spot goes to Soroka or to Waldron. Soroka, I don't know, this year didn't look great, 5.16 ERA, and we're off to a shootout in uh, Canadians and Red Wings. Okay, ERA was, as it looks here, everyone was about 3.3. Two and up, up to the 5.1. Whip, 1.13 for Waldron. Quality starts, 20 from Walker Bueller and 20 from Josiah Gray. So at least there's that. 20 out of... Uh, 20 out of 33 and 20 out of 30. So 20 out of 33 for both pitchers were quality starts. And for the war, 3.7 for Gray. 3.4 for Gore. 3.4 for Bueller. Rutledge, Waldron, Soroka, Abel. Okay. Okay. The case per nine were never that high. No one had that high in the case per nine. Relief pitchers. Looking at innings, Sorting by innings pitched. So Barlow pitched more in the end. That's good. Caleb Ferguson didn't pitch that much. I would have wanted to see more. He had the best numbers. 
Caleb Ferguson looked really good out there this season. Came, same for Jonathan Loisiga. Am I saying that right? Loisigia? Always tough for me. The whip as well looked really good. That's why we have him signed on for three more years at 4.3. Hunter Harvey, what a beast. 39 saves from him. Really happy to see from Hunter Harvey. And for the war, 1.4 from Loisiga. All positive. That's good at least. Matt Barnes, three wins, five losses, three saves. 4.73 ERA. Eh. Caps are in. It's official. Even if the Red Wings win. Okay, oh, because they win. Wow. So it's official. The Caps are in. Now my question for you, Hobbsy, or anybody else. Are the positions locked or could those positions still change? I want to do the uh, simulation. The war was zero. Negative 0, 0.00. Caulfield. Walking in. Saved by Reimer. Caps. I don't know how they made it. The Caps are one of the... And I say this with love for the Caps. I would love nothing more than to see Ovi go on a run. The Caps have to be one of the weirdest teams to make the postseason. You had uh, Wilson out for a while. You got Ovi, who was so slow at the start of the year. Your goaltending is Darcy Fraudster, backed up by Charlie Lindgren. And granted, Charlie Lindgren's been good, but I don't know. Charlie Lindgren's going to carry you to a cup? I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, your defense is, is shaky. Sandine is injured. You got John Carlson holding it down. Anyways, I'll break that down in my video when I break it down in the uh, data cast. Lane Hudson is shooting next. If Florida gets one point against the Leafs, then they leap Boston. We get Toronto. But can anything change after? Could like for in game eight? Like, what am I trying to say? On Wednesday and Thursday, Hobbs, could anything change on Wednesday and Thursday or after tonight? Is it locked in? Lane Hudson. Oh, nice move, but poke check by Reimer. Um. Yeah, the, the Caps won the Cup in what, 2018? Yeah, you have Connor McMichael, Hendricks Lapierre as your 1-2 centerman. It's an odd team. Whew, so this has been a long enough stream. We're closing it on three hours at this point. You can tell me in the Discord server, Hobbsy. We're closing it on three hours. So let's just sim the offseason, let's sim the offseason quickly. In the postseason, the Rangers defeat the Dodgers to win the 2025 World Series. Uh, in the end, it was a six-game series there. So here's the the, um, the postseason, if you're curious. Texas winning it. They won in 2023 and now in 2025, so good for them. Um, awards, Nathaniel Lowe, Nate Lowe, the World Series MVP. And uh, postseason MVP, Nate Lowe and Max Muncy there. And that's about it. So simply offseason at this point, and here we are retirements maybe retired players garvin alston he retired due to injury yeah he had a bad injury oh so that actually caused him to retire at 29 years of age so garvin we wish you all the best in retirement coming in on rhymer suzuki nice oh he tried the little datsuk flip not quite the same toe drag but he tried the little flip jake odorizzi austin nola who else retired Justin Verlander, any Hall of Famers? Oh, Max Scherzer retired, and he goes in with the Expos cap. The Expos Nationals cap. Max Scherzer, what a legend. He retires and he enters the Hall of Fame. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's just end it off quickly. For next episode, leave your thoughts down here on YouTube or over on the Discord server, link in the description for next episode, next Tuesday, live here, yeah, and the Red Wings win it in the shootout. Live next Tuesday, April 23rd third at 7 p.m eastern do we want to start thinking about these exclusive free agents are we thinking about lane thomas is he a sign and trade candidate potentially he wants about five million per year it's not crazy caleb ferguson i think's back on board jd i think walks harvey we want back barnes does he walk higashioka does he walk we have just over a hundred million to play with but that's all of these exclusive free agents our staff we can rebrand the team and uh, fix the, the uh, catcher uh, uniforms. Looks like the Red Wings know their season is over as well. They look pretty sad out there. Um, for trades, we we're thinking about Cade Cavalli maybe, but I won't go too deep into it right now. Let's just think, start thinking about who we want to bring back and where we want to spend our money, and then we can start getting into the offseason. Next episode, where we want to, by 2026, I think we want to be in wildcard conversation. So if we can start thinking about where those little tweaks to make us actually a, con a wild card contender, that's what we'll want to think about the most. This team had good growth this season, and I'm looking forward to seeing what changes we'll make headed into 2026, ladies and gentlemen. Who's out? 
who's in, what positions, where do we need to see changes. Keep in mind, growth over the next few years might look something like this, just to throw it out there for how growth might look within the next few years. You can pause and look back at that if you want, and we'll wrap it there. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Appreciate your viewership this evening. It was a long one, much longer than I thought it would be, so thank you for your attention, the donations, the love, the hockey talk along the way, and just for being here. We'll be back in a couple, uh, about 48 hours, as we'll have our Starfleet simulation on NHL 24, Thursday night, April the 18th at, at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'll see you then, if not in the Discord server, and more playoff content coming soon, real-life playoff breakdown, data cast content, as well as the NHL 24 playoff sim. Last year, I got like 10,000 views. So that'll be a big one. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Much love. Enjoy the rest of the start of your week, the midweek, and we'll see you on Thursday when we're closer to that luscious, wonderful Saturday moment. Uh, it's always great on Thursday because we're getting closer to Saturday. All right, everybody, have a good night. We'll talk soon. Stay well. Thanks again for being here. Let's go Expos, baby.